Number 10, BYU. Hi, everybody. Craig Bullerjack along with Mark Lyons. And, Mark, we know that the... Uh, the factor in this game is going to be the weather. It's snowing, it's cold, it's windy, and uh, let's go down onto the field with, and check in with Doug Miller. Doug? Let me tell you, Craig, you can break out all your how cold is it lines today. How cold is it? But here on the KSL Weather School thermometer, it's about 24 degrees. It's dropped 2 degrees since uh, we just began opening warm-ups here, so the temperature is plummeting. You can see the snow falling. The wind is right out of the north, a stiff wind. Chill factor somewhere around 0 to about 4 below right now. So cold and wet. And miserable is an understatement for this day here at Falcon Stadium. But plenty of warmth here. I'll tell you, the uh, cadets tuning up across the way as the cadets, uh, as the Falcons come on the field. The conditions here at Falcon Stadium this afternoon, not so bad on the field. Sweepers have been working for, well, since daylight this morning, clearing the, you can see the snow behind me has been removed off the surface of the field. The, uh, they've used sweepers and plows and uh, scooped it to the side over against the far side of the stadium. It's typical of a muddy field right now, but... Most of the snow and the icing conditions have been cleared away. They have a heating system under the surface of this field. It will not be used. They think that would only contribute to the muck and the mire that uh, will develop regardless of the afternoon. A great equalizer. The Cougars could not have wished for a worse day to contend with here at Falcon Stadium. For the Falcons and the Wishbone Craig, they call this bone weather, and you can only guess why. Chilling to the bone, Chilling indeed. To the bone. Talk about the bone, Mark, because uh, today uh, that's what this Air Force Academy team, they live off the, the wishbone. That's right. They have three options off the wishbone. They have the fullback that they'll run on the dive, and the quarterback could keep the football, and then uh, if they come to tackle the quarterback, he's going to pitch to his trail receiver. And uh, It's very effective. It's what they've run for years, and BYU plans on stopping it the same way. I'm interested to see if Air Force comes up with a new wrinkle since BYU's defended it so well the last few years. You know, uh, Air Force Academy, the number one rushing team in the Western Athletic Conference, passing, of course, uh, belongs to BYU. And, Mark, you have to think, will that negate today, and will that uh, really uh, calm Ty Detmer down a bit? Well, I think receivers are going to get open. They have a little advantage in a wet field because they know where they're going to cut and when to do it. The defender has to play off of that and react to it. So I think uh, that if Ty can get him the football, He'll have an opportunity to throw the ball. And, of course, BYU still uh, with a chance to win the WAC championship and uh, the Air Force Academy hoping to go to the Liberty Bowl. That's right. And, uh, so they're looking for a winning season. All right. It is snowy. It is cold. And it's windy here at Falcon Stadium. We'll come back for the opening kick. Don't go away. The following is a KSL Television sports presentation. Today, from Falcon Stadium in Colorado Springs, Colorado, the BYU Cougars meet the Air Force Academy Falcons on BYU Football. Brought to you by your independent Allen Super Safe, Bestway, Food Town, Macy's, and Thriftway Stores. By your local Wasatch Ford dealers. By Industrial Supply, the right place for the right tools for you. By Fisher Nut, what could be delicier than Fisher? And by Geneva Steel. America First is your best friend. We were with you way back when. Seeing you through thick and thin. Building for your future together with America First. To do the job right, you need the right tools. Industrial Supply makes it easy to do the job right with professional tools and supplies and expert service. Save now on Cooper Tools, the difference between work and workmanship. This all-new Lufkin Series 2000 tape has been redesigned to meet the needs of tradesmen. 25-foot tape just $10.99 with a no-risk trial offer. With snips are now $8.49 and Turner self-igniting torch just $33.99. Come to Industrial Supply for the right tools and supplies for any job you do. Professionalism, integrity, commitment, just a few of the qualities that describe Salt Lake County Sheriff Pete Hayward. He provides the expert leadership needed to manage a budget in excess of $32 million and to supervise his 900 sworn officers, civilian employees, and volunteers. Pete's insight has put the Sheriff's Department on the leading edge of technology through the use of computer-aided dispatch and an optical imaging system. Uh, this is Sheriff Pete Hayward. I ask for your vote November the 6th. Paid for by the Committee to Re-elect Sheriff Pete Hayward. At R.C. Willie, we know that keeping in step means staying on top of what's new in TV, electronics, appliances, and audio. 
So we're having Electronics Expo. Two weeks of displays, demonstrations, and special low prices on the latest in home audio and video technology. Buy during the sale, and we'll even throw in the Thanksgiving turkey. So you can either come to R.C. Willys and discover what's hot, or stay home and turn into what's not. And you're looking live at the Rocky Mountains just outside uh, Colorado Springs. It uh, started snowing late last night, has not let up, and it is a cold and windy day here at Falcon Stadium. Cougars going to receive this kick, and they come into this game with a 6-1 and one record. They are undefeated in Western Athletic Conference play. Air Force Academy 4-4 four and four on the season and 2-3 and three in the conference. Fisher DeBerry, his seventh season with the Academy with an overall record of 52-29-1. And, and, of course, Lavelle Edwards, the dean of WAC College Coaches, his 19th year with BYU. That's right, and these two coaches are both, uh, the two of them have been in the WAC the longest time, and so uh, you go all the way from Lavelle Edwards, 19, down to Fisher to Barry at seven seasons. So there are a lot of new coaches in the WAC this year. Cougars coming off a 55-31 win last week against New Mexico at home in Provo, and last week, Air Force Academy racked up 52 points against the Utah Utes. They won that game 52 to 21. So we're ready to play football, and it is a chilly November November afternoon. Stacy Corley, Eric Mortensen back to receive the kick for the Cougars, and Jason Christ, who wears number one, ready to kick it away here for the Air Force Academy. Field is actually in pretty good shape. The uh, wind. I do think is going to be a little bit of a problem a is there he goes. Pretty good indicator. It just blew the ball off the tee there. Uh, I asked uh, Coach Schmidt if this was similar to the wind that they experienced in Oregon, and he said it was about the same kind of uh, wind that they had, and so it was an effect in that game. Crowd still trailing in here to Falcon Stadium, and we're ready to play football. And Eric Mortensen will down it five yards deep in the end zone and the Cougars will start up at the 20 uh, yard line. This is kind of the first bad weather game for either team so neither one of them are really going to be able to react until uh, they know what's going on. We start with uh, BYU their normal starting lineup uh, Nyberg, Boyce, Chris Smith, the receivers uh, Fort, Balmforth, Stevens, May and Kime in the line of course Ty Detmer, Tui Pelotu uh, in the backfield and uh, Matt Bellini. Cougars line up slot to the left on first down Detmer will throw good protection swings the ball out to Chris Smith the big tight end on the screen pass follows his blockers and he's knocked down to the turf at the 31 yard line so a first down for BYU Brian Hill the inside linebacker chased him down to make the stop Detmer warming up on the sidelines just before that first series said it's not so bad not so bad I'd much rather compete with or contend with rain than I would the snow we'll see how it develops but right now he says I feel pretty good about throwing the ball or he'd rather have snow than rain no he said he'd rather have yes he'd rather have snow than rain he said right. much more difficult to control and handle the ball in a rainy condition first and ten for BYU Matt Bellini goes in motion Nadi Valdez lines up in the slot and a quick flip out to Bellini makes the fingertip catch and he's stacked up at the 35 yard line Shannon Yates and Carlton McDonald team up to make the stop I think BYU is going to come out and uh, throw the football early well I guess looks like they are that's a pretty good statement but uh, you know when you have a situation here where it looks like maybe they would run their draw or maybe they would go ahead and run the the quick trap uh, they choose to come out and throw the football try and get Air Force thinking hey we are going to throw the ball what well, was that a catch by Bellini so uh, that's kind of an indication that his hands are still able to catch the football the lone back is Peter Tui Pelotu and he is hit at the line of scrimmage driven back a yard it will be third down at the 34 yard line the strength of Air Force's defense is their inside linebackers. And uh, there you just saw the hit by Brian Hill. Top tackler on this team, 65 sticks before the start of this game. Two quarterback sacks, an interception. He's a little guy too, Mark, 5'11", 210 out of Columbus, Ohio. But you can see he hit old Peter Tui Pluto, and, and Peter's pretty tough to take down. And uh, he hit him straight on, and uh, there was no extra yardage. Third down and eight for BYU. Detmer will pedal back. Good protection. Fires a strike near sideline. Micah Matsuzaki inside Falcon territory. Knocked out of bounds at the 41 by Brian Hill, the inside linebacker. 
Boy, nice job by Detmer as he just stood and waited and waited and waited and read the defense. Uh, Air Force Academy in their standard 3-4 look. You see, as he steps here, watch how much patience he has. He waits, he waits. Those offensive linemen are working hard. He finds Matsuzaki right on the sideline. Makes a nice throw, nice catch. Micah Matsuzaki, a sophomore out of Honolulu. 11 receptions, 214 yards. And boy, what an average. Nearly 20 yards a catch every time he gets his hands on the football. A little counter trap. Tui Pelotu off right tackle. And he uh, keeps those legs running up to the 33-yard line. Shannon Yates, the Falcon back, makes a stop. Yeah, the success that BYU's had throwing the football certainly does help that kind of trap play because uh, the linemen for Air Force are going to try and come forward. Second down and three on the Air Force 33. Ty Detmer, 19 consecutive games passing over 300 yards. Matt Bellini, a rare carry, and he is uh, brought down maybe a gain of one on the play. Call it third down, two at the 32. Air Force's defense is just a little bigger this year than they normally have been. They've got fair size up front, and uh, BYU still thinks that they can go ahead and drive those people, move them out, and be able to run an off-tackle power play and pick up three yards. And so you can see that Air Force is going to be pretty stingy against the run. You know, it's amazing, Mark Bellini, uh, labeled as a halfback. That was only his seventh carry of the season. Yeah. 49 receptions. His forte is catching the football. Third down and two. Detmer drops back. All day to pass. Now dumps it to Peter Tui Pelotu. Got the first down. JT Tokish, the inside linebacker, rode him down at the 26-yard line. But Detmer, a good six or seven seconds back there to pass, Mark. Boy, and that does demonstrate BYU's ability to pass block. You see those guys are pretty much man-on-man, -man, have pretty good size. They're, they're able to extend their arms. Did you see uh, Kime be able to block and extend his arms? And when you can extend and push that defender away from you, that means you're probably going to have a pretty successful afternoon of blocking. And now the officials calling a timeout. I think uh, BYU's going to take one, aren't they? Detmer's coming over the sideline. I'm Pat, out. Pat BYU. Sweeney, the, the referee today. Timeout, BYU. We'll step aside and take a timeout. 11.07 left. We're scoreless at Falcon Stadium. Don't go away. As a former county attorney of Davis County, I still take a deep interest in county affairs. I'm asking you to elect J. Dell Holbrook County Commissioner. Elect J. Dell Holbrook for Davis County Commissioner, a native son working to benefit Davis County. In Salt Lake City, Dennis Smith is a Piper stockbroker who will understand you. Understanding you comes first at Piper, Jaffrey, and Hopwood, and Smith. McDonald's presents Golden Moments in BYU Football. The Bulldogs were the highest-ranking team BYU had ever faced to date, and the Cougars led most of the second half on this Steve Young to Scott Colley TD pass. But George's Herschel Walker amassed 51 fourth-quarter yards, scoring a TD and setting up the game-winning field goal to give Georgia a 17-14 win in what Bulldog coach Vince Dooley called a monumental struggle. Have you wanted to go someplace special but really had no way to get there? Then come to your nearest Rocky Mountain Chevy Geo dealer and check out the 91.2 or four-door Chevy S10 Blazer. Anti-lock brakes and a powerful 4.3-liter engine comes standard on Chevy's Blazer. Now get up to $1,000 cash back from Chevy or 7.9% GMAC financing. Ford's Explorer doesn't compare. So come on, stop dreaming and start blazing a trail to your nearest Rocky Mountain Chevy Geo dealer. Because the good times start in a new Chevy Blazer. Well, so far, Craig, uh, Ty Detmer is throwing the football very effectively. He's four for four, picked up three first downs for 48 yards. So right now uh, he's able to throw the ball well. Cougars have taken uh, the ball on the 20 and marched it down to the 26 of Air Force. Bellini makes the catch, sidesteps uh, one tackler, but finally tripped up. Shannon Yates, uh, number 25. Bellini actually outran him, and Yates uh, put a hand or a leg up, and Bellini tripped and fell, and... Uh, Instead of picking up big yardage, uh, picked up maybe three on the play. Second down at the 22-yard line. You see him try to sidestep him. And if he could get by his 
but see, you're right. Yates just gets that leg up, trips him. Of course, Yates had the two interceptions last week against Utah, and uh, that time he came up, made the play, and stopped on a short game. Little karate kick on Bellini. 10:30 left, first quarter. Detmer on second down. A deep drop, good protection, and Detmer throws it across the middle. The crowd wants grounding, but. Uh, Chris Baker broke in number 66 and really put the heat on Detmer and he just dumped it across the middle. Good zone coverage by Air Force Academy. And, you know, if you take away the short receiver from BYU, uh, it, it is going to be difficult for Ty to throw into the wind, long downfield. And so uh, the outside receivers right now are kind of out of that part of it. If BYU they... football is brought to you by your local Allen Super Save, Best Way, Food Town, Macy's, Thriftway Stores, members of Associated Food Stores. Third down and seven on the Falcon 22-yard line. The lone back, Tui Pelotu. Detmer steps up in the pocket. has got a man under throws. Matsuzaki at the 10-yard line. And that makes it a difficult throw. Ty just couldn't get his hands on it enough to... Throw the ball deep downfield. Now he had the receiver underneath. Tui Peloto could have made the reception, and Air Force was in. Pretty much a drop-off pass secondary. So uh, he had the man open, but just didn't have enough control of the football to throw it downfield. So Earl Kaufman, number 86, will uh, come onto the field to try a field goal. They'll place it down at the 31. It'll be a 41-yard attempt. His longest of the season is 43. And he'll kick into a stiff win and that ball may be tipped at the line of scrimmage and it's uh, short and so the academy shuts down BYU on their first drive 10 13 left first quarter now that's kind of a discouraging thing BYU wanted to get on the board early they put a nice drive together to get down to the 21 yard line and then come away with no points and uh, those kinds of things especially into the wind that would have been an extremely important drive for them to get some score well, if you follow Air Force football, you know uh, what type of a uh, quarterback they've had here over the past few years. D. Dallas is gone, and they've kind of uh, experimented somewhat. And today, Rob Perez will get his third start. They run the wishbone, and Perez fakes into the line, wants to keep it, and he does. Turns it upfield, picks up maybe four yards. Derwin Gray, number five, they're in on the tackle. Now, BYU, of course, is uh, going to have to stop the dive. Uh, that's the bread and butter of the wishbone. They'd like to get that fullback the football, let him pick up three and four yards at a time. And so that's the part that BYU has to take away from him. And then the other part of it, they're going to try and have to work. Second down, Durham on the counter up to the 30. Lost about, well, no, picked up three yards. It will be third down and two. All right, and that's what I think we'll see a little bit more from Air Force Academy today is the uh, counter dive, the counter trap that comes off of the wishbone, and the fullback trap just because uh, BYU's had such success in stopping the option. One of the things the coaches talked about last night, that's their most biggest concern today, those three and four yard drives, dives right up the gut, man. Not the, not the bone sweep, the option outside. On third down, Perez with the pitch. And Shad Hansen forced that play and tripped up Durham. Boy, they almost had Perez in the backfield. Somebody uh, came through there early and forced him to pitch in a, in a hurry. And when the defender knows who has the football off the option, gives him a little bit of an advantage to be able to come up and make the tackle. So Jason Christ is in to punt the football away on fourth down and two. BYU playing uh, their, their stack defense. It's not their normal defense to stop the option. Gets a nice kick, and it drives Bellini back to the 10-yard line, slips, picks up a block, has got a hole at the 25, 30, 35, 40, and he's hit down at the 41-yard line. A nice return by Bellini, and Mark the slip maybe allowed Air Force to overrun the coverage. Boy, it was a great, great kick. The thing that I liked about his kick is that he kicked it to the side instead of straight to Bellini. Well, we're going to take a break here with the score 0-0. Zero, zero.
nothing delicier than Fisher Nuts. They're fresh picked, fresh packed, fresh roasted, fresh toasted. No wonder they taste fresh open. What could be delicious than Fisher? There's nothing delicious I know. Football is very much a team sport. But in every game, there are individuals who make the team better by their performance. Geneva Steel makes it possible to give special recognition to those outstanding team players with its Geneva Steel Man of the Game Award. In addition to the honor this award gives to the game's outstanding player, Geneva contributes $1,000 in the name of each recipient to BYU's Athletic Scholarship Fund. Congratulations to this week's Geneva Steel Man of the Game. Good-looking ride. Who is this stranger? Don't know. What you fading her? Conoco Super Unleaded helps prevent damaging intake valve deposits. And it helps keep them fuel injectors and carburetors real clean. Ladies. Who was that man? I don't know, but I sure like how he rides. Conoco. Hottest brand going. And we're back at Falcon Stadium. Uh, 8.08 left first quarter. Scoreless, and the Cougars uh, with their second offensive series of the day. They'll start up at the 40 after a 29-yard punt return by B Matt Bellini. Detmer, once the throw, has got a man open, and a sliding grab. No, incomplete at the 32-yard line. Brent Nyberg, the intended receiver. Yeah, Detmer just underthrew it just a little bit. And that's what they're going to try and do is just get up and go on an out pattern because the defensive backs from Air Force are crowding those receivers because they know that he's going to have a little trouble throwing a ball long downfield into the wind. Second down and 10, 8.03. The clock stopped after the uh, incompletion. Cougars line up slot to the left. Bellini in the slot. Detmer rolls. Looks back across the grain, throws over the defensive coverage and nearly picked off by Virgil Simpson, the outside linebacker, number 97, a sophomore out of Houston, Texas. And Chris Smith, the big tight end, the intended receiver. It's not quite high enough for him. Now BYU opened the game with a screen pass and that's gonna be a very effective throw. Here you see Ty trying to set up and then throw back against the grain. Smith thought he had a catch. Now looks at three, third and 10. Andy Boyce checks in. Double slot for BYU. On third down, Detmer pumps and fires. And a first down catch made by Nyberg inside Falcon territory at the 49. Clifton Lovelace, uh, the outside linebacker. I think they're going to have success with that kind of a play. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised it took them their second series and 10 passes to be able to throw that. The inside corners, the corners are playing up very far inside. And here Detmer just sets up. Nyberg goes exactly to the stick, 10 yards. You'll see the stick right behind Nyberg. So he catches the football, makes the first down, makes sure of the catch, and boom, takes a pop. First down for BYU. Mike Salito on the counter, just checked in. Big yardage, 12, 15, maybe 20 yards up near the 30. A 19-yard run by Salito. And he's been on the sideline, those legs a little cold, you know? <laughs> you know, you get into this kind of a football game, and once you start playing and you do stay into the game and get into the flow of the game, it's, it certainly you, you warm up and, and you don't notice the cold so much. And so, yeah, I think that's a good point that the guys that they alternate in here might come off the sidelines just a little bit cool. Mike Salito, a senior out of Union City, California. Another first down for BYU. Salito again gets the call and he's stacked up at the 29 yard line. Now Detmer made an audible. It looked as though he checked the play off at the line so he must have uh, seen something. Now he, he checks quite a bit but they ran the inside trap again and uh, this time they weren't as successful. Oh you can see why as Hill came all the way across from his outside linebacker spot. Boy he fills well doesn't he? Top tackler on this uh, Falcon team. 5'11", 210. Not what you call your prototype uh, linebacker in yeah, size and weight, right. but he does cover a lot of turf. On second down, Detmer feels the pressure, runs out of the pocket. Got a man, and down to the 15-yard line is Salito, and JT Tokish chased him down from behind to make the stop. Nice job by Detmer to elude the initial pressure, and uh, as Doug said, I think they have a little bit of trouble looking into the snow as they... Uh, 
work out there. He gets the ball right out in front, makes sure of the catch. Nice job by Salido. And then he goes down with the defender on his back. Clock running, 6.40 left to play, first quarter. Cougars with a first down at the Air Force 15. Salido gets the call, stumbles, fumbles the football. It's free, and Air Force has it at the 19-yard line. Carlton McDonald on top of that football, and as the Cougars were driving, Salido stacked up, fumbles the football, and the Falcons recover. Now that happened from him losing his footing as he starts up here. He kind of kicks and trips as he makes that move, and you see the ball slide out away from him. Then it gets drilled right there by a defender. Had it kind of like a loaf of bread instead of having the football at the ends. Then the big pile up and Air Force comes up with it. Nyberg came awfully close to getting onto that football. Boy, JT uh, Tokish gave Salito a pop. After the turnover, Perez, the handoff. The fullback is Rodney Lewis. He's the top runner on this uh, Falcon team. He'll pick up uh, maybe three yards, call it four. He's the bread and, bread and butter. He, bread and butter. He won, he's the, How he's, cold are you? I <laughs> thought I was the only one with cold lips. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounded like I was uh, kind of chattering my teeth, didn't it? But uh, he's the guy that BYU has to stop. Jason Jones and uh, Dan Zedroik in. Perez on the option, keeps the football, and he has buried Alima Fatisimanu along with Shad Hansen. Ran him down down to the 26-yard line. It will be third and three. Good lateral pursuit by BYU. BYU's playing a stack defense. They have no nose guard. There's nobody playing directly over the center right now. Then they have the two linebackers in a stack position, so you can't get to them to block them. Something similar to what the Chicago Bears will always have run. Now they're going with two wideouts. On third and three, Perez flips the ball out. Zedroit, and he is uh, tackled at the 31. Tony Crutchfield, the left corner, but not before they got the first down. And that brings this crowd up on their feet, and not a big crowd today. And, of course, the weather keeping a lot of people home. Yeah, it's, it's, there's enough people here to notice that they're here, though, and they're, they're getting excited about it. And that's Air Force's first first down. Nice job by Perez. As you see, pitches, pitches out. Now you got one-on-one -on -one out here with Tony Crutchfield. He has to make that tackle. Not going to be too often that the cornerbacks are involved with tackling the pitchman. Little motion in the backfield. No flag down, however. Falcons pick up three. It looked like uh, Dur Deshaun Durham got a little quick start, but uh, the official did not throw a flag. Mitchell and Gray team up to, to make the stop. Now, Air Force ran what they call end over. They take the split end, and he was over on the same side as the tight end. That makes it an unbalanced line. Uh, BYU's a defense will not adjust to that. It just takes the, the tight end out of uh, being eligible to catch the football. On second down and six. Clock running, 4.15 left first quarter. Zedroik, the handoff. Nice Pete Harston, the left tackle, uh, made the stop. You know, you look at the lines and uh, the weight advantage BYU brings into this game, Mark. 260, the front three. That's the average weight for these three guys uh, for BYU. Harston, Smith, and Kafusi. The offensive line for Air Force, 240. Yeah, but that's bigger for Air Force. I, I think Air Force is uh, somehow getting bigger people to come over, and they're coming closer, but they can certainly play. Third down and five. Perez turns it up, takes a hard hit, got the first down. Derwin Gray put the pad on him, but he got a first down. Yeah, exactly. He just barely got that. And Perez was able to, they were able to spread the defense enough, stretch it out enough that uh, Perez was able to just get the ball upfield. He's not going to be real eager to pitch just because of the same situation there. A little bit uneasy in handling the football. Actually, the tackle is the thing that takes him forward for the first down. To Fisher to Barry in his seventh year, uh, the master at the wishbone. They'll use about eight different running backs today. First pass of the day. Perez under pressure, chased out of the pocket and throws downfield, incomplete. 
Uh, this is what makes playing the wishbone extremely difficult because they can ride the fullback in there and then throw the football. It forces your corners to play man-to-man. -man. In wishbone, you almost have to play man-to-man -man coverage. Corners can't be involved in playing pitch for that reason right there. If they run and ride the, the fullback and then the corner has to watch for pitch and play his outside receiver, you can't do them both. And so BYU will be forced into man-to-man -man coverage most of the time against Air Force. Second down and 10 at the 43. Perez turns it up. Nice job of stringing it out. Shad Hansen got him by the shoe tops. Perez with a five yard gain. Third down and five. Clock running just under three minutes left, first quarter. And we're scoreless here at uh, Falcon Stadium. That's called playing it soft on the outside. They're going to play the quarterback soft so that uh, he doesn't get a chance to read that outside end, either coming straight to him. He doesn't know whether he's playing pitch or coming to quarterback. Now there's a look at the cadets on hand today. Third down and five on the 48. Perez will throw, and he's hit, and the ball falls incomplete. He really took a shot from Scott Giles, the right outside linebacker, Great pressure. Now that time Air Force's line showed pass just a little earlier. The guy he wants to throw to and doesn't ever get a chance. Boy, was that a that was a hit. That was, you know, and you're gonna have a hard time throwing the football, whether it's wet or cold or anything, when you got a guy across your back like that. The guy they want to hit on that is the trail receiver, the trail back, and he's arcing on the far side of the field. Falcons will punt for the second time. A high snap. Jason Christ. It's a nice kick away. Bellini settles underneath it at the seven. And the Falcons come down in force. And they stop Bellini at the 13-yard line. So the Cougars will start up in a hole. It's scoreless, 2-13 left, first quarter. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The legendary name in outdoor fun now brings you a new sport. With more muscle than Ford Explorer. Advanced stopping power with a grip that holds tight for extra security. The affordable new Jeep Cherokee Sport. Why buy an ordinary 4x4 when you can own a legend? See your Utah Jeep and Eagle dealer where you can always expect the best. It's the sale you've waited for all year. Granite Furniture's annual Norbest Turkey Day sale, where you'll get free Norbest turkey with every purchase, up to 20 pounds with just a $300 purchase or more. This weekend at Granite, you'll find some of the year's best buys on furniture, appliances, carpeting, bedding, and home electronics, and free Norbest turkey with your purchase. So hurry to the Granite Furniture Superstore's gigantic Norbest Turkey Day sale before the deals are all gobbled up. One of America's 10 best cars. An absolutely lovable sports coupe with no competition. Now, to go with those good words about the Mitsubishi Eclipse. Some very good numbers. The 91 Eclipse starts at just $10,959. But right now, get an even better deal with special factory-to-dealer incentives during the Good Word Celebration. Now, at your Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Come in for a great deal. See Barber Brothers, Jerry Siner, Stephen Wade, or Rick Warner. Snow continues to fall here at Falcon Stadium. A little dusting here on the ground right off the 13-yard line where BYU is just about to put the ball in play again, but really not that bad of conditions right now. Just a little wet, cold. Detmer on first down, throws far sideline. Tui Pelotu makes the catch, takes a big hit from uh, Brian Hill, the inside backer, picks up five. Sizzler, more of the best from Utah's favorite restaurants. And there's Detmer's numbers for the season. Nearly 3,000 yards. He'll get that today. Already bypassed that, in fact, about, uh, what, 31, almost 3,100. Uh, he's an outstanding quarterback and just keeps racking them up. A minute 43, the BYU has to look into this win. Second down and five. Peter Tui Pelotu spins and bends his way up near the 25-yard line. Hill again makes the stop. Now this is an important play for BYU because they've enjoyed field position all game. Uh, their first drive, they took the ball deep and moved it down and got positive field position. Now Air Force's last series and punt put BYU down here at the 13-yard line. And uh, in order for them to 
continue having that kind of on a wet day like today and a, and a win field position is going to be extremely important so BYU needs to make this first down in order to continue this drive third and one Detmer drops back to pass fires a dart up to the 30 yard line and Brent Nyberg made the catch Eric Faison some great coverage right riding on his back and Nyberg comes up with a big first down catch well let's let's see this replay because uh, Nyberg does a nice job to get the hands under the football and look he makes the catch right up there uh, in the blue part of his pants boom he's got the football very good coverage in fact I thought it was awfully close to interference Detmer's 9 of 13 for 90 yards now and uh, this will probably be the last play of the first quarter 37 seconds on the clock Detmer again throws it Tui Pelotu with a nice diving catch at the 35 caught that out in front of him and a day like today those gloves Mark do come in handy huh <laughs> well I'll say I, I would have been wearing them you know most <laughs> thanks a lot though but <laughs> I borrowed Dave oh you mean uh, the ones that Peter's wearing right. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Those gloves are a neoprene type rubber. It's a, it's actually a skin driver's glove or a wet wetsuit type glove. It almost has a tacky surface to it even when it's wet and it does aid and you can see Peter just reach out and spear that ball and it's stuck good. First quarter is over. We've played 15 minutes. And in the snow and wind, we are scoreless at the Air Force Academy. We'll take a break and be right back. There's a fall harvest of savings now at your associated food store. Join in the savings during our gigantic big brand sale. Pick up several Dan and 8 ounce yogurt in your choice of flavors at the special price of two for 89 cents. Fill the refrigerator with Sunny Delight Citrus Punch and Sun Sip Fruit Flavored Drinks. Each 64 ounce container is just 99 cents. And stock up on one pound regular Blue Bonnet Margarine at the budget stretching price of two for 99 cents. Bring home the harvest at Thriftway, Food Town, and Allen Super Save. To do the job right, you need the right tools. Industrial Supply makes it easy to do the job right with professional tools and supplies and expert service. Vice grip locking pliers are the most versatile tools you can own. Save on the complete vice grip line, including the popular GLN and 10WR models, now just $7.50 each. And try the new quick grip bar clamp. Light, strong, fast, and so easy you can use it with one hand. Come to Industrial Supply for the right tools and supplies for any job you do. If you're um, digging, then uh, you should call um, the people that know where um, electricity is so you don't get electrocuted. Your shovel can cut through a power line. Ask my dad. Power lines are dangerous and they could maybe electrocute you. If you don't know where they are, call the Utah Power Company. The power company will mark the lines with blue stakes. They're pretty hard to miss, even if you're not looking. But don't push your luck. It doesn't cost anything. It's just a nice thing they do for people. All it takes is a phone call. That's not so hard, is it? People sometimes get shocked because they don't think. If you keep your eyes open for power lines, then it'll be just fine. It's the people who don't look around that worry me. I think the biggest problem is Dad in his garden. I think someone's got to mark the lines that run through with tomatoes. And make sure you set your clock uh, for 10.30 tomorrow night on Sports Beat Sunday. Rick Majerus, the head coach of the University of Ute basketball team, will join us as a special guest, and we'll run down all the NFL highlights. That's tomorrow night at 10.30 on Sports Beat Sunday. Second quarter underway here. Second down and five for the Cougars on their own 35. Detmer, good pro protection. Bellini makes the catch. And still on his feet, driven out of bounds at the 39-yard line by Brian Hill. We've called his number. Uh, we've only played, what, 15 minutes and 10 seconds. He's, he's everywhere. It looks like he's going to match up with Bellini pretty much wherever he goes. We had a pretty good first quarter for BYU offensively. They had 95 yards passing and 25 yards rushing for 120 yards of offense, but zero points. They got seven first downs in that first quarter. Air Force Academy had 36 yards rushing, no yards passing, two first downs, and, of course, no points either. And so... Uh, so far, BYU is controlling the game, but uh, there's no points on the board. And the one turnover deep inside Air Force territory by Salido. The catch far side made by Andy Boyce 
ridden out of bounds at the 47 yard line by uh, McDonald. And, and that's just going to be there. Here they are looking at third and short. And that defensive back is still giving BYU's receivers an extremely large amount of room. And I think that they're going to continue looking that on third and short yardage to just hit that quick out pattern, the hitch pattern. You can see that defense, he's not anywhere. It's third and one. And there's nobody around back there. Andy Boyce, uh, what a season. Number two in the country in uh, yards per game. Nearly 110 yards receiving per game. That's number two according to the NCAA. And Salito on first down tried to cut, cut back up the middle and lost his footing. Now the play is designed to go a little bit further to his left, but he saw there was nothing happening out there. Air Force is going to be extremely quick in reacting to that initial block. They read what they call read heads extremely well as that lineman tries to block him right or left. Well, they're very quick to offset that kind of a move. Second down and 10 on the 47. Clock running. Just under 14 minutes left in the half. As a look at Ty Detmer, Heisman Trophy candidate. Rolls out. Protection. Chris Smith. And he makes the catch and takes a shot at the 37 by Shannon Yates. The Falcon back. And Chris Smith, a little bit bit of a mismatch Smith weighs in at 240 and Yates at 194 now watch Chris he knows that defenders right behind him he's, he he settles down there in the middle makes the catch and he prepares himself see he gets ready for it he knows he's going against the zone he knows that guy's gonna come to the football and uh, so as soon as he catches it he prepares himself and uh, was able to bounce off that hit Bellini in the slot to the right Tui Pelo to the lone back and Peter will follow uh, his left side blocking we were really close to a big play as uh, the right side of the line pulls out in the little counter trap and Peter gets all the way outside but uh, you'll you'll notice I think he's right behind Mike Kime Mike Kime as he makes that cut right off the block and almost squirts through there clean Mike Kime the right tackle he can pull out of there 6 8 285 a little guy <laughs> and he you know with a guy that size you kind of just get in his draft as you go upfield. <laughs> Pick up a couple of miles an hour just like by following yeah. the semi up here yeah. this morning. Second down three, Detmer. All time to pass. Got a man, Smith, wide open, down at the 10, breaks a tackle, down at the seven yard line. <laughs> Shannon Yates, Eldrick Hill. Hill had him by the jersey, and Smith kept the legs going <laughs> and picked up an extra three or four yards. Cougars knocking on the door at the seven yard line. Chris is coming out, but he was out there saying, me, come on, find me, because he was open, and he was out there yelling and hollering. Look at he's all alone. He's found that, you know, I wonder if the white jerseys have any, if there any difference in finding a guy with a white jersey in a snowstorm. I think it might be hard. He's probably looking for blue pants to throw to right now. <laughs> First down, goal to goal at the Air Force seven-yard line. 12 minutes left to play first half. Voice in motion. Detmer bootlegs it. Throws back across the grain and touchdown, Boyce. <laughs> yeah, now that wasn't supposed to happen that way. <laughs> he had eight seconds to throw uh, that pass. And so as he made the little counter trap fake, oh, there's, there he took the hit. Boyce was getting ready for it, and Denver gave him a shot. But Boyce is the guy that started on the right side of the field and came down in motion. Now, uh, Detmer's trying to make a read out here to the right. He wants to find somebody out on the right, but he uh, holds up. He's got good time to throw. Seven, eight seconds. He delivers the ball all the way back across the field, and he had their choice, Peter so or Boyce, either one of them. The extra kick is good. Detmer with his 24th touchdown toss of the season, and Boyce with his eighth touchdown reception. Cougars on the board, 7-0. We'll be back. 11.48 left in the half. The Murdoch boys are surrounded by more Suburbans than they can handle, including this special breed of Brandywine Suburbans indigenous only to Murdoch Chevrolet. Whoops, one just got away! Plus these special paint packages that are really hard to hold on to, and there are even more on the way. To make room, the Murdochs have bagged a special deal on this Silverado 350 V8 half-ton 4x4 with air, power windows, cruise, and cassette for only $18,986. So hurry, with deals like these, there's bound to be a stampede! <laughs> We all grow up. 
along the way, learning from whomever is willing to teach us. And it's interesting, isn't it, how today our eyes get opened and minds get broadened, where our heroes come from and dreams begin. And as television grows up with us, maybe the secret lies not so much in trying to know what tomorrow will bring, but just in making sure we know someone who does. It's the right move. It's the right choice. Robo City, the move is going on. Send her flowers if you want her to forgive you. Wear Elizabeth Taylor's passion for men, and she'll forget it ever happened. Elizabeth Taylor's passion for men, and now traveling companions. Your gift with any purchase from Elizabeth Taylor's passion for men at CCMI. And we're back at Falcon Stadium. Uh, the Cougars on the scoreboard, 7-0. Detmer uh, rolling up some big numbers in a snowy day, Mark Lyons. 15 of 19, 153 yards and a touchdown. You know, uh, we've seen BYU quarterbacks do outstanding, uh, make outstanding performances in snowy days. Mark Wilson, of course, came in and threw five touchdowns in a snowy day against Wyoming. And so uh, it, it seems as though the system still works. I don't know. I had a hard time. <laughs> And Earl Coffin with the short kick taken at the three yard line. Nice return as the Air Force gets into a real nice tight wedge on that kickoff return. Here we see Detmer taking a long time to throw the football and both Boyce and Peter are all alone on the backside. Now that's pretty good vision, don't you think? You know, he's looking onside and, and uh, he doesn't know exactly where those guys are and makes a nice throw. Come to Industrial Supply for the right tools and supplies for any job you do. A proud sponsor of uh, this afternoon's football game. 11.41 left in the first half. And the Falcons go right back to the running game. Jason Jones, the fullback, up the middle, picks up a couple of yards. There's a scoring uh, drive, Mark. Uh, 11 plays, 87 yards, chewed up nearly five and a half yeah. minutes. And that was an important drive. I really think that uh, they kept their field position uh, by making the drive. They made a nice third down one completion to keep that drive going in, the, in that series. And then they end up with points. And so that certainly was what they wanted to try and accomplish. Second down and eight. Hand off up the middle. Rodney Lewis, the senior, the top rusher on this Falcon team. I had 131 yards, a couple of touchdowns last week against Utah. Whack player of the week, I believe. And uh, had an outstanding game last week. BYU's containing him pretty well so far in the dive. Now, here's where uh, Air Force comes at third and five. And third and five is what, you know, you haven't had success running the football, and yet they're still gonna run trap right now, the counter trap or option. At the 37. Looks like a busted play. Perez in trouble and tied up by Kafusi. Check that Eddie Green, number yeah. 49. Now, if the lineman ever gets involved against the option, the option's dead. They have to make all the blocks down to the end of the line of scrimmage. If anybody pops through here and you see Eddie just comes all the way across and uh, makes the play, he, he just fought off that blocker. And, and if that ever happens, then the option isn't going to go anywhere. Jason Christ punting for the third time, standing at his own 20. A low snap. Cougars sent a rush and a short kick. Bellini will watch it bounce, picks it up, fumbles, and picks it up again at the 40. Called that the 38. Dangerous play. Bellini watched it bounce, bobbled it a few times, and chased down a bound. Yeah, you could call him the bobbling Bellini <laughs> on that one uh, as he uh, did. Really had to scramble to hang on the foot. The Mazda Protégé. How many other compact sedans give you as much room and power? How many get you the Mazda Value Pack, a special options package that can save you up to $615? And how many others also come with special factory incentives that can save you hundreds more? How many? This many. If you want the value of a Mazda, get a Mazda. At your Utah Mazda dealer, now. University Mall is Utah's largest mall with over 195 stores offering the finest kids, men's, and women's wear shops to jewelry, shoes, and more. Visit us after the game and see why. The only place to be is University Mall. 
In Provo, Jack Peterson is a Piper stockbroker who will understand you. Understanding you comes first at Piper, Jaffrey, and Hopwood, and Peterson. Dusty's GMC Vans and Trucks, Utah's number one GMC dealer, announces the biggest sale in their history. We're way over stock, so we're passing special factory incentives to you. Now is your chance to buy at discounts never offered before. Completely loaded 90 SLE Suburbans discounted to $6,000, some up to $2,000 below dealer invoice. Payments start at only $290 per month. Luxurious 90 custom vans are discounted up to $8,000, starting at only $17,995, and monthly payments from $257. There has never been a better time to buy than now at Dusty's GMC Vans and Trucks, 3405 South State, Salt Lake. Back at Falcon Stadium here, and you look along the BYU bench there, that's not a great offensive huddle there. They're huddled around some propane heaters. Here's another little tool you see on the field, keeping hands warm. A little pouch. The receivers can plug those hands in, keep fingertips warm, and it makes a big difference here with a 24-degree reading at Falcon Stadium. Frank? Flag down on first down. Salito took the handoff. Brian Hill, the inside linebacker, uh, there to make the stop on Salito. First flag we've seen here in the first half. I think this, well, it, it's a personal foul face mask against BYU. So one of those linemen somewhere, as he came across to make the block, uh, got a hold of a uh, face mask. Talking to Andy Boyce here on the sidelines about the touchdown catch. It's easy to overemphasize maybe how cold it is, how miserable the conditions are. Andy said it's really not that problem. These little pouches give you a great deal of heat. They're, they're uh, insulated. The body heat keeps your fingertips warm. He says the big deal is just keeping concentration up through the snow, watching that ball in, sucking it all the way in. So that's all there is to it. Doug, do you get to keep that for the rest of the game? <laughs> no, it's a borrowed. <laughs> it's a borrowed hand warmer. Yeah. Well, that's a brutal penalty against BYU is the personal foul kind of face mask. First and 25, a quick flip out to the far side. Boyce buried at the 29. J.T. Tokush leading the, the charge of blue jerseys. It's a wide receiver screen as Andy's going to try and pick up that first tackle on that side to, as he comes out the block on the corner and then gets straight up field. But also, they weren't able to seal off the inside linebacker as he was able to get out. Tokish had great lateral pursuit to get out there and make the tackle. A loss, a, a loss of one yard on the play. Second and 21 on the Cougar 29. Nyberg lines up slot to the right and now Boyce in motion. Detmer runs out of trouble back across the grain and another catch made by the big tight end Chris Smith past the 45 at the 46 four yards shy of the first down. That's his fourth catch so far and he's having a great afternoon out there just standing out there in the middle of the field. That's going to be about 70 yards. Of Boy nice job by Detmer again and you see how he threw against his body. But you can do that when the wind's behind you. It helps you a little bit, but he's uh, fading away as he threw the football. I think he has a strong enough arm to play the game, don't you? <laughs> you know, sometimes you judge a quarterback on how tight the spiral is, yeah. but Ty's pass is not all that pretty at times, but he gets the job done. Third down. Detmer again trots back. Smith again inside Falcon territory down at the 41-yard line. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, it's something. He, I got him 16 for 20 right now, and uh, that's about, I think that's going to be pretty close. And <laughs> there's just a lot of catches being made, the ball's thrown. But uh, here you'll see Chris Smith releases right behind the linebacker, and Denver gets it just up and over that linebacker where Chris Smith makes a nice diving catch for another first down. And remember, Smith just, what, four weeks ago had the knee surgery. It's amazing. You can come back and uh, play the type of game he does. Ooh. They run, run it right up the gut. Brian Hill sniffed it out. He's awesome. I tell you, I don't know if he was on a stunt that time if he or if he read that trap. Uh, I think he's doing an excellent job of reading the line. He, he just seemed to know, boy, here comes the trap, and it's going to be right here, and he's straight up in there filling that gap again. Nice job, Brian Hill. Second down, 11. Clock running, 7.15 left in the half. Only scoring was a seven-yard pass from Detmer to Boyce in the early minutes of the second quarter. Falcon showing blitz. Cougar line picks it up. A little lob pass out to Zundell to back up tight end. He's got a lot of running room. 15-10 and knocked out of bounds uh, at the nine-yard line. Eldrick Hill, the free safety, made the hit. New formation for BYU. That time they came in with two tight ends. Chris Smith was on top. 
and Zundell was on the right side. And so then they ran the counter trap fake. You see Detmer, Everett, those linemen are all pulling, and they pull protection out for him. Zundell is all alone now. The two tight ends forces that safety that was free. Now he has to he has to play somebody, and maybe he doesn't recognize the formation, and that's what Zundell uh, gets him wide open. A junior, 6'5", 230. First and goal at the nine. Salito, the handoff, cuts it back up the middle down near the six. Now that time they ran two tight ends and gave it to the uh, to the uh, counter trap. And uh, Salito decided let's go the shortest distance and he cut it straight up instead of following those white shirts with him out to the wide side of the field. I think it's a good choice. Right now Detmer's got 220 yards throwing so there's another uh, I think he's on his way to catch Steve Young at 22 straight so of 200 yard games. NCAA records uh, just keeps knocking them down. Salito, the handoff. Near the goal line, they'll mark it down at the two. Now, and that time he decided to get out and run. He needed, a, he needed a block from the wide out in order. If the wide receiver would have been able to get and shield his defender just a little bit better, I think that uh, Salito would have been able to get that all the way in. But you see right here at the end of his run, he has to cut it back inside. And uh, he also decided, boy, there's the goal line. I'm going to get it. Two, three yards away. Mike Keim pulling again to lead the way. Now the Cougars come up with that full house backfield. Sim Tia Tia, Scotty Charlton, Tui Pelotu get the call. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. Well, a uh, linesman on the far side saw Peter get the nose of the football over, apparently. And uh, I was inter that's interesting that BYU chose to run three series, three plays from the nine yard line. Two counter traps and then uh, lead the big boy up there through. Let's take a look. Here's Tui Paluto. Nice block out there by Charlton. There's Peter reaching for the goal line. Peter has a unique knack, man, of sticking that ball out there. He says he can smell that goal line dust, and he just has a way of threading that ball through traffic and getting it over the edge. The sixth touchdown run of the season for Peter Tui Pelotu, or Kaufman, in to try the kick after, and he boots it through the uprights, and the Cougars build a 14 to nothing lead. 5-19 left, and now there's a flag, though, down on the field at the nine-yard line. He's going to call a white captain over. So apparently this uh, this penalty is going to be against Air Force. Pat Sweeney. Roughing the kicker, I think, is a call. Running into the kicker. Running into the kicker. Point is good. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So the extra point uh, does stand 14 to nothing. As you see, uh, Kaufman taking a hit and they will mark it off on the kickoff. We'll be back. When you need a business or personal computer, see ICS Today's Computers in Provo. During our 15th anniversary, purchase a Compact Desk Pro 386N and receive a 40 meg hard drive free. This slimline 386SX computer includes 1 meg RAM and high-speed integrated VGA. Get our great prices and a free 40 meg hard drive with every Compact Desk Pro 386N purchased. Purchase your computer from one of Utah's oldest and most respected dealers. ICS Today's Computers on the BYU Diagonal in the Albertson Center in Provo. It's the year-end closeout now at Rick Warner's Chevrolet Buick Geo. Choose from over 200 new 1990 cars and trucks below factory invoice. Like a new 1990 Geo Prism, now only $7,995 plus tax and license. Or drive home a new 1990 Chevy half-ton four-wheel drive pickup for only $11,995 plus tax and license. Buy now and make no down payment and no payments till November. Hurry to the year-end closeout at Rick Warner's Chevrolet Buick Geo in Provo. Tasting fresh. Tasting just what I want. Tasting more at a salad bar price. Chuckarama, the tastiest buffet in town. Tasting better than ever. Chuckarama. If your tires are worn out and in disrepair, your local IFA store can offer a variety of solutions. IFA carries a full line of Co-op and Kelly Springfield tires for cars, vans, light trucks, and farm equipment. For service and dependability, we're IFA, helping you get around. Behind every outstanding sports program is a strong booster organization. The BYU Cougar Club is an important part of BYU's success. Call 1-800-I-AM-4-BYU. Be part of the excitement. 
14-0 here at Falcon Stadium. Earl Kaufman will kick it away from the 40 after the five-yard penalty for roughing the kicker after the extra point, and that ball bounces out of the end zone, so the Falcons will start up on their own 20-yard line. That last drive took BYU four minutes and 25 seconds, so on their two drives, they've spent almost 10 minutes in putting those 14 uh, points on the board, and, and that's certainly uh, something that they want to do, particularly against Air Force Academy, who has to uh, drive, drive, drive for their scores. Rob Perez, the quarterback, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, and now they break the wishbone. Perez. And they try to run it off the right side and maybe a yard. Rodney Lewis, or check that, Jason Jones in at fullback, number 30. They split the bone that time, and that doesn't change a whole lot for Air Force Academy. The lead blocker is either going to try and block on the man that takes quarterback or the man that takes the pitch man. And so he can do that out of the wishbone, or he can do it up in a slot, or he could even do it out there in a twins. And so uh, it doesn't matter a whole lot that they split that guy. His block is going to be about the same. Second down and nine. Perez Ooh. wanted to pitch, and he took a shot by Scott Giles. You can hear the pads pop <laughs> here, and he uh, falls down to the 20-yard line. Did it look like he froze, you know, when you're about ready to have a car accident, you uh -oh. know, and you're, all of a sudden you freeze? You know, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm locked in. He kind of, he says, oh, gee, here comes Giles, and he just froze for a second. Or maybe it was the temperature, but uh, he, he, I think he had a chance to pitch. But, uh, boy, he just locked up and uh, took the hit. Giles uh, playing now for the injured Jared Levitt. Giles was playing the red shirt. Yeah. But uh, Jared Levitt out with a neck injury, and that forced Giles into, uh, into service. Perez. Giles again coming in. Perez dances out of trouble. May run at the 20, the 25, 30. Got the first down and slides in safe at the 34. A nice run by Perez. Brian Mitchell, the right cornerback, chased him down. Now this is set up to be pass all the way. He doesn't make a good match with his fullback here, and he tries to throw onside, but he looks back, and there he beats the containment. The outside linebacker on the backside has to stay home and force the quarterback inside. He gets out the containment. Whenever that happens, it's going to be a big game. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Perez, the pitch. Zedroyk tried to turn the corner, and he's chased down at the 36-yard line. Giles there along with Mitchell. Yeah, that's a nice. See, that time uh, it, it was similarly played to the earlier one when Giles came in and drilled him, but this time he gets the pitch off. I think he was a little better prepared to uh, make sure I'm going to throw this ball this time. And uh, that, that brings Mitchell up there in a hurry. Now, Mitchell saw the pitch and responded quickly. That uh, Derwin Gray is responsible for the pitch man out there. Second down and eight on the 37-yard line. Three minutes left in the half. Little timing pass and a nice catch made by David Mott. The tight end inside Cougar territory. They mark it at the 42-yard line. Now Perez double pumped and waited for Mott to get open. It was a well-thrown football. You'll see him right here with... He waits, and boy, all the defenders jump, and then what a throw and catch. There's not a lot you can do about that. The defender's on the outside shoulder of, I mean, excuse me, the receiver's on the outside shoulder of the defender. The ball's thrown outside, and he makes a catch like that. Pretty tough to stop. Perez, the pitch. Chris Howard, and he's knocked out of bounds by Dewey Gray. Now a late flag, two flags now down. Uh, it's going to be a, a face mask penalty on Gray. Now, Gray has to pick it up just a little bit in recognizing here comes the option. It's not the fullback. I have responsibility for the pitch, and uh, he's getting out there just a half second slow. Now that they're making a couple pitches to that trail receiver, uh, he'll start to get the timing and feel a little bit more about how quick he has to be in order to get over there. You see Derwin Gray's trying to tackle from inside out, and he, then he grabs his face mask. Five yard penalty. No, still first down. Two and a half first minutes. Down. A lot of time left on the clock, 229. Yeah, the I'm Falcons moving their best field position of the day. Now BYU needs to change up next time the way they play the option so that it's not Derwin Gray on the pitch man again. They'll have to change it up so they can't read who's the right guy to, to go for. 
fullback. Right up the middle, Jason Jones, a 200-pound junior out of Grand Prairie, Texas, pulls a couple of white jerseys along with him. First down for Air Force, and they're on the Cougar 27-yard line. Now those two tackles have to have to tackle that dive man and he was able to slip through right over the center in order to make that first down. Now Air Force starting to feel pretty good about what they're doing. Perez hit by Giles and Batisse <laughs> Manu. That Perez is a tough kid, isn't he? He's taking he some pop. Perez. Boy, I'll tell you, check the helmet at halftime. Giles gave him a lick and then Alima Batisse Manu came in to finish him off. And uh, but but Perez bounced off both of those hits in an effort to to well get back to nothing. But uh, <laughs> I mean yeah, that's too bad to take those shots for nothing. But nice job by Perez to take that hit and not go down. Second down at ten. One thirty left. First half. Up the middle go the Falcons. Now you'll notice that fullback as he starts off right guard he makes a a cut to his left. Air Force is going to take a timeout in order to stop the clock here and try and get the points on the board. Makes a cut to his left, right up over the center. So here we have BYU 14-0 over Air Force. First pregnancies are unique in many ways. Channel 5 presents Your Health Today. This segment sponsored by HCA St. Mark's Hospital. Women expecting their first child have greater concerns, more questions, and greater anxiety simply because they haven't had any comparable experience. The special needs of new mothers have prompted the development of Firstborn, which offers a variety of support services designed for first pregnancies. Firstborn services include helping you select a physician who suits your needs and preferences, an RN counselor to provide you with advice and guidance as your pregnancy progresses, a 24-hour helpline, a wide variety of childbirth classes, and a monthly newsletter. Increased education, support, and attention can make a big difference in the overall success of a first pregnancy. To learn more, pick up a free brochure at Osco Drug or call HCA St. Mark's Hospital, your Center for Excellence in Women's Services at 268-7777. Getting warm down there, Doug? Hey, you know, the temperature has soared up to 28 degrees down here. <laughs> Clouds are lighting up a little bit. The snow continues to fall, though, at Falcon Stadium. It's still plenty cold. Third down and six. The pitch. Durham fumbles out of bounds. Or a first down. At the 13, it was like just the time just stood still as that ball took a couple of hops. Now they're going to bring into the new fumble rule, I think is going to come into effect here, as they've marked the spot where he fumbled. And uh, if they if they think that boy that just pops out of there that that football is getting to be like an ice cube. Hey Craig, yo, I understand Mom and Dad Bowler Jack are watching us somewhere out there in the Midwest. I understand they are. I hope they are. Don and Wanda, Kansas City. Who do you think they're rooting for? <laughs> I better not say. <laughs> Field goal attempt. Joe Wood will mark it at the 29. A 39-yard attempt. He's a left footer. Oh, way wide. He's uh, just, boy, it almost blew it right back in there. And look, there's a guy down there saying it was good. Now, he's outstanding. He's 11 for 12 so far this year in field goals. And uh, so I, that was quite, he played that break. Just he like did. <laughs> A lot closer than I thought it would be. I was on a line straight with the goal post. It looked like it was going to be five or six feet wide to the left. And it broke back in there. Wind blew it back. As long as we're saying howdies to Robert Stidham from the entire bench over here. They want to know Robert uh, that they're thinking about him. He's recovering from some heart problems uh, at the Utah Valley Hospital, majoring in sports medicine. A lot of folks here on the bench thinking about you, Robert. Cougars with a 14-point lead, a minute seven to work with before halftime. Detmer hands it off to Salito. Big hole up the middle. Well, now that play changes the uh, attitude right now, what is going to do, and he picks up 16 or 17 yards there on the draw play. I think he'll go ahead and throw the football now in this down and uh, see if they can get it up for, uh, for some more points. Hill, the free safety, rode Salito down. Detmer on first down. Good protection. Pocket collapses. Get the ball out to the near sideline for Chris Smith. Boy, he's just out of his reach. Uh, when, when Ty has that long to throw, 
Those receivers continue to run those routes deep, and it's just stretching and opening up some wide open lanes out there for those receivers. Uh, he's got outstanding time. That time, Boyce was wide open in the middle field, and so was Chris Smith out there. But boy, uh, Detmer could not get his weight on his back foot in order to throw the football to Smith. Clock stop, 51 seconds left, first half. Detmer on, second down. Across the middle and under throw Smith at the 450 yard line. <laughs> Smith could be Sports Illustrated's player of the week this week if Detmer would get him the football because he, he is really open out there. I don't and think there's been a guy really around him within five, seven yards every time he's uh, been on a pass play. And that's got to be discouraging. Uh, for Ty, number one, because he sees it. You know he sees it. He wants to get the ball out there. And then for the coaching staff, because, you know, they're going to keep calling his number until somebody comes out to cover him. Third down at 10 on the 37. Tui Pelo, two on the delayed draw up near the 50. Still on his feet and fights down to the Falcon 48-yard line. Boy, big play, third and 10 there for BYU to call that play. And on third down, though, BYU's read that their linebackers for Air Force are extremely deep and hurrying back into those zones. BYU takes a timeout in order to stop the clock with 37 seconds. Nice block by Bellini to spring Peter upfield. Oh, there's a nice job by the Chris Smith out there. Little seal block on Shannon Yates. And nice trap up front by the lineman. That had to be uh, Fort that came across and made that trap. Ty Detmer talking to former Cougar quarterback Robbie Bosco. 37 seconds left in the half. Look, it's a football game. You can, you can see out there that uh, Neil Fort got a little blood there on the front of his jersey. They're, they're playing a game. It's real. Like you said, once you get warmed up, you forget about the cold weather and the snow. <laughs> and it gets to be a game. Chris Smith over on the bench, talking about the uh, cold. Somebody asked him, are you cold? No, no, no. He's got gloves on. He says he's not feeling it. He said, we played worse weather than this. And somebody said, where, when? He said, spring ball. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten the 48-yard line of Air Force. Play action, Detmer to Boyce. And he's wrapped up at the 34-yard line. Shannon Boyce Yates, reception. along Faison with Eric Faison, double team him. And another first down, they'll move the first sticks, down. and that stops the clock first at, down. at 28 seconds. And Detmer with a quick drop, and he just pounds it into the ground, stops the clock with 24 seconds left. Now that's the new play this year that they allow the college quarterback, if he'll go ahead and immediately down the football, that uh, you can stop the clock legally by doing that. That does, of course, take it down, as it didn't in against uh, Colorado, Missouri. <laughs> but uh, he also cannot look at a receiver first to think about, hmm, maybe I'll gun it, nope, he, and then down it. Uh, he has to immediately take the snap and down the football. I don't think uh, anyone will forget the five downs. Well, not for another 18 years or so. <laughs> I've forgotten the last one. Colorado, <laughs> yeah. 24 seconds left in the half. Detmer rolling out. Brian May there with protection. Go for the home run ball. Chris Smith and the ball nearly picked off at the goal line. McDonald back on coverage. And Chris Smith covered a lot of ground as he broke across the grain down near the goal line. The ball tipped and nearly picked off by Air Force. Now this is the sprint out. Now he has a wide receiver who's running a comeback pattern deep downfield. And then he has Chris Smith crossing all the way. You see the zone coverage there. And both defenders had a shot at it. I think you'll see uh, Boyce running his corner pattern. Detmer is 20 for 28, 235 yards so far. And the one touchdown to Boyce. Third down. Detmer pumps, runs out of the pocket. Boyce wide open and smartly trots out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Seven seconds on the clock. Seven seconds. So the choice is, uh, well, here's... Detmer was looking to the bench, run one more play, it looked like. Yeah, and, and, you know, I don't think he's... I don't think he can uh, unless they unless they score. 
Uh, yeah, they're either going to go for the score or they're uh, going to kick a field goal. I don't think that they're, yeah, they're going to choose the field goal because you can't run two plays in seven seconds uh, in order to get that off. And so BYU is going to try and get points right now with a field goal. And now they have to call timeout. Earl Kaufman on the field with seven seconds left. A little delay in making that decision there. The game clock is down to six seconds. 25 second clock down to six seconds, so they had to call a timeout to keep from right. costing them another I five see, yards. I, th I think if you have nine seconds, I think you're pretty safe. You can go ahead and run a play uh, and, and shoot one time for the end zone. But at seven seconds, uh, and especially when you're away, that maybe the trigger finger on the clock might be just that half second slower <laughs> than at home. <laughs> so uh, I think you have to take the, uh, the shot at the field goal. There's Fisher to Berry as he stalks the sidelines. Boyce having a good day, too, along with uh, Chris Smith. Five catches, 49 yards, and the one touchdown. I don't know about you, if we get a shot of the, of the bench, everyone's wearing blue warm-up jackets, except for Detmer, and he's got a, a white parka on. It's a special parka they had made by an outfit in uh, Orem, I think it is, called Northern Outfitters. It's a closed-cell foam. If you remember uh, back a couple of years ago, we did a little piece at the top of Snowbird, right. slept out in minus 40 degree weather and this stuff. It's extremely warm. The ball spotted on the 26, Boyce the holder, a 36 yard attempt by Kaufman. The kick up and good. So it was a good choice. Now Air Force has blocked four kicks this year. Uh, I think Yates has two of them and that took seven seconds. So that's the last play of this half. Kaufman hits the field goal and will break for half with the Cougars up 17 to nothing. Today's game is brought to you in part by R.C. Willing. We simply sell for less. And by Conoco. Quality fuels and motor oils, the hottest brand going. As Congress goes astray, a voice from Utah works to steer it right. Jim Hansen. He votes against big spending, against pay raises, and sets an example, returning $300,000 in unused office money to the U.S. Treasury, earning the respect of his colleagues who named Jim Hansen to serve on the Ethics Committee, where he leads the fight to clean up Congress. Utah's Jim Hansen. Respected. Effective. Just a thought in passing. The longest distance between you and the gas pump is a short line. The geo line of short compact cars from Gus. To do the job right, you need the right tools. Industrial Supply makes it easy to do the job right with professional tools and supplies and expert service. Kennedy Toolboxes, chest, roller cabinets, and workbenches are the professional's first choice for quality. Utility Toolbox, just $23.40. Eleven drawer machinist chest, $158. And five drawer roller cabinet, now $267. Come to Industrial Supply for the right tools and supplies for any job you do. Why is Salt Lake County protected by five new fire stations? How did we come to enjoy five new libraries? How is it that our families benefit from hundreds of new parks and park renovation projects? Taxes have increased on city, state, and federal levels. So why haven't Salt Lake County taxes risen in over four years? Here's why. Government is working in Salt Lake County because Bart Barker puts people before politics. Bart Barker for County Commission. And we're back at halftime, Falcon Stadium, and the Cougars with a 17 to nothing lead. Craig Buller Jack and Mark Lyons. And Mark, you got to figure that uh, field goal by Kaufman just before half had to put a little bit of a, uh, a downer on the on the academy. I think so. At uh, 17 to nothing right now, and the way Air Force is having trouble moving the football on the ground, I think that they're a little bit concerned about what they're going to do second half. I, BYU's moved the ball extremely well 
and the uh, Air Force should feel pretty good at just giving us 17. You know, we talked about what uh, would happen with Detmer today on a windy day, snowy, uh, the ball tough to grip, nearly 250 yards in the first half. I don't think he's uh, left anything in uh, anyone's mind to doubt him what he can do on the football field. Well, Air Force is putting a lot of pressure on their two inside linebackers. They're making all the tackles, but uh, they're also having a hard time covering Smith and Boyce in the middle of the field with their safeties deep. You know, Doug, uh, You've had a good first half. Uh, I guess you, you haven't uh, frozen up completely. But really, you know, the footing has not been uh, all that bad either today. I'll tell you what, you got to give these guys at Air Force credit for the condition that they've kept this field in. It's snowing, spitting a little snow here, and it's cold, certainly. It's been between, oh, 25 to 28 degrees, which is about what it is now, 28 degrees. But uh, not that bad, not much more than just a normal wet, muddy field. Pretty good crowd here behind me in Falcon Stadium. You can see a lot of Air Force fans out on the field right now. The Air Force Falcons, there goes uh, Thunder, I think is the bird's name, making a dive at the target as halftime unfolds here. And across the way, hundreds and hundreds of cadets. They have to be at this game, rooting for the home team, of course. So at Falcon Stadium today, uh, there's uh, plenty to keep you warm if you get involved in a great football game. Air Force, by the way, I understand uh, Mark and Craig had hoped to hold Detmer to 150 yards today. They figured if they could keep Detmer in the passing attack because of the weather, the equalizer to 150 yards, they had a chance. It might come down to who had the ball last. It looks like uh, that is one goal falling a little short today. All right, Doug, uh, we're going to come back, uh, talk more about this half. Let's first go back to Salt Lake City. Brad Steinke standing by with Sports Central. Brad? All right, thanks, Craig and Mark. We'll get you got up to date with all the scores around the country, plus highlights of the BYU Air Force contest right after this. In Provo, Dwight Christie is a Piper stockbroker who will understand you. Understanding you comes first at Piper, Jaffrey, and Hopwood, and Christie. Gene Harvey Chevrolet Geo's Harvest Sale gets you a new Geo Metro first-time buyer's price at only $59.95 or as little as $109 a month. A new storm for only $99.95 at Gene Harvey Chevrolet Geo in American Fork. Hi, Utah County. This is your old friend, Pete Fackler. We make tire buying easy. Come see us today. You've got to know Fackler Tires made tire buying easy for over 29 years with qualified salespeople and unbeatable follow-up service. Fackler carries only top quality products like Dunlop Tires for the smoothest, safest ride on the road today. And you know Fackler will give you the best price around. That's why you've got to visit Fackler Tire in Orem, Provo, American Fork, or Spanish Fork. Sports Central is brought to you by Fackler Tire. You've got to know they're your tire store. By Precision Tune, where your tune-up can save you money at the pump. And by participating State Farm Insurance Agents. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We are at halftime of the BYU Air Force game. The score right now reading 17-0 to 0 in favor of the BYU Cougars. Time to get you caught up to date on college football around the nation. Plus, we'll have more from Tokyo as the Jazz lose their season opener to the Suns. It is a cold and snowy afternoon in Colorado Springs. The 10th ranked Cougars taking on the Falcons of Air Force. Highlights from the first half. And really the snow not having that much effect on Ty Detmer. Second quarter, Detmer goes to Andy Boyce on a seven-yard touchdown. Has all the time in the world. Look at the uh, conditions on the field. Goes across, finds Andy Boyce to make it 7-0. BYU out on top. Still second quarter, Peter Tui Pelotu got the call. And he went two yards to make it 14-0 BYU. And uh, believe it or not, some uh, Cougar fans braving the elements. I guess it's about 24 degrees right now in Falcon Stadium in Colorado Springs. The defense looking for their first shutout of the season. Scott Giles makes life miserable for the Falcons. Getting to the quarterback right there. Then a host of Cougar tacklers bring him down. And right now, as I mentioned, the score is 17-0 BYU leading at the break. The running Utes trying to get back in the wind column tonight as they take on the Aztecs of San Diego. We're back at uh, Air Force Academy. Uh, the Falcons trailing BYU 17-0 here at halftime. And Mark Lyons, uh, Fisher to bury his thoughts. You think at half, you stay with the ground game. I mean, that, that's his bread and butter. They did try the pass, though. It surprised me a little bit in the first half. The last drive that they had, they had some ground. Uh, they had some gains on the ground. The pitch was working pretty well for them. I think they're going to try and work on that a little bit harder and getting that early pitch and putting together another consistent drive. And if they can get one out of it and score, then I think that they'll feel pretty comfortable about being in the game. How about a 17-point lead for BYU? Is that comfortable in a day like today with the wind, the snow, and the and, cold? And the way they've stopped the wishbone. I, I think they feel pretty good about it, but I, I'm sure that uh, they want to get one more on the board. All right. Uh, we're just about ready to get underway. Third quarter action coming your way. 17-0. BYU on top. We'll be back. Don't go away. 
Here in the West, who's number one in trucks? Your Ford dealers. But the best never rest. So we created special 4x4 Mountain States editions of America's number one trucks. F-Series and Rangers. Mountains of equipment. Air. AM-FM cassette. Special interior package. This Mountain States window arch and badge. Mountains of savings. Save over 2800 on F-Series. Save 2400 on this Ranger Super Cab. Mountain States Ford 4x4s. A peak selection at your local hometown Ford dealer now. Barbecue? Sure, but summer's over. Bag it? McDonald's? Hey, the grill. All right. You know, I sure could go for some... You can have fries and a Coke with that. A McRib pack. I'll take it. Hey, let's eat. Oops, better do it now, huh? Mmm, McRib. McDonald's? Oh, folks, and fun. Chomp. There's a fall harvest of savings now at your associated food store. Join in the savings during our gigantic big brand sale. Pick up several Dan and 8 ounce yogurt in your choice of flavors at the special price of two for 89 cents. Fill the refrigerator with Sunny Delight Citrus Punch and Sun Sip Fruit Flavored Drinks. Each 64 ounce container just 99 cents. And stock up on one pound regular blue bonnet margarine at the budget stretching price of two for 99 cents. Bring home the harvest at Best Way, Weinegers and Macy's. Commissioner Barker now says he's changed his mind on the resignation of this. Is now say this all palace blunder will cost taxpayers fifty-five thousand dollars over the next. While parents are still waiting for the overpass on Forty-Seven South, Commissioner's promise would be. Commissioner Barker has now. The said headlines no, change, but unfortunately, the stories stay the same. The fact is, Salt Lake County can no longer afford Bart Barker's indecisions and bad judgment. I'm Jim Bradley. I'd appreciate your vote on Tuesday. The following is a KSL Television Sports Presentation. Today's game is brought to you in part by Texaco System 3 Gasoline, star of the American Road. And by your neighborhood Rocky Mountain Chevy Geo dealers. Welcome back to snowy, cold, windy Falcon Stadium. And uh, just about ready for the third quarter to get underway, Rob Erickson, a uh, cadet, the cadet wing commander here at the Air Force, hails from Salt Lake City, a Brighton High yes, School sir. graduate. And uh, Rob, tell us a little of the, just characterize the level of the, the rivalry, the intensity here that's those 4,400 cadets seated over across the way. Well, Mr. Miller, I went to the University of Utah for a year before I came here, and I thought the uh, rivalry was pretty bad between uh, the use of the Cougars, but it's nothing compared to the cadets in, uh, in BYU. It's pretty bad out here. It's a <laughs> big rivalry. What's the talk over there? I mean, uh, nobody's doing any push-ups today. Well, sir, we're trying to get on the board here. Uh, we're trying to, I'm going to bribe Ty Detmer over here and see if he uh, can't set something up. But he's a freshman out there to do a couple push-ups for us. Rob, you're a senior this year. Best of luck to you with your career with the Thank Air Force. Much, and ironically and very appropriately today, the Air Force Falcon that is with us is a glacial, is that right, glacial Falcon? He's a Jeer Falcon, and his name is Glacier. Glacier, the Falcon, will be uh, presiding over the third quarter here. Craig and uh, Mark, as we get underway. You know, on that Falcon, uh, it's the only performing uh, mascot in the NCAA. And today, the airplanes could not. Those jets did not fly by today. But that Falcon <laughs> was still out there working at halftime. Fly. You bet. 17-0, the Cougars will kick it away. Falcons want the football. Earl Kaufman at the 35-yard line as we start the third quarter here. And the kick taken at the goal line by Jason Jones. And boy, he gets hit at the 25-yard line. Marked it down at the 23. Number 34, John Christensen on that special teams unit comes down to make the stop. Scoring by quarters, not much to talk about in the first 15 minutes. Cougars put all 17 points up in the second quarter of play. And that's BYU's big quarter. They score more points in the second quarter than any of the others. And that's also Air Force's weakest one. They've given up the most points in the second quarter. Perez at quarterback. Up the middle, Rodney Lewis, a big run, and he's finally chased down at the 44-yard line. The biggest run from scrimmage today, Scott Giles, the right side outside linebacker, chased down Lewis, and he's uh, the top rusher on this Falcon club. You know, every football game has two halves to it. 
And uh, it is going to be interesting to see if the cold has any effect on the 17 point lead that BYU has or if they come out here and play tough. And uh, Air Force knows that they're still going to have to scramble and work in order to get in the game. A first down for Air Force. Perez. Keeps it, turns it upfield, picks up four yards down at the 48-yard line by Josh Arnold, number 20. That's one of the things about the wishbone. Is it looks like you've got him pretty well contained. Everything's going to work just right. Uh, the, the play ends, and then they move the sticks four yards downfield. It looked like he was held for not much of a gain, and uh, he picks up four yards. Perez, a junior, his third start this season out of Atlanta, Georgia. And they've got a corral of running backs. Clock running, 13.45. Perez fakes the handoff, wants to throw the ball on the ground. Is it a fumble? They called it a fumble. Pete Harston lowered the boom on Perez and Scotty Giles. Well, that's Giles who hit Perez and Harston with the fumble recovery. Was his arm in motion? Here comes Giles from the backside. It was not going forward. He pulled it back, but he had not yet gone forward. And you can see that the collision was what caused the fumble. I think that was a correct call. Turnovers now are e even. Salito fumbled in the first quarter for BYU. And now Perez, the ball knocked out of his hand. Cougars on the 36-yard line. Detmer at quarterback. Play action. Going for the home run, ball, voice, touchdown. <laughs> he almost didn't see him. Now, who's down out there? Detmer took a shot after he let go of the football up on his feet. His second touchdown pass of the day. Boy, he almost didn't see Boyce. Boyce is supposed to run a corner pattern. And so as, uh, as Detmer comes out, you'll see he makes the play fake. He fakes the counter trap, and he comes out. Now, Boyce right now has gone to the center of the field because there's absolutely nobody there. And so uh, Detmer finds him, throws the football to him, and uh, there it is, the touchdown. Uh, Boyce made a read in the defense and saw that they were playing. A double zone had a man outside, so there was nobody in the middle of the field. Touchdown pass number 25 for Detmer, and the ninth touchdown reception for Boyce. They've hooked up twice today. Kaufman in for the extra point. Boyce the holder, and it's no good. Off to the left. A 36-yard touchdown from Detmer to Boyce. And the Cougars up 23-0. We'll be back. This is Senator Orrin Hatch asking for you to support my Republican friend and colleague, Carl Snow. Utah's 3rd District has a national reputation for upholding the traditional American values on which the Republican Party is based. Carl Snow is the candidate in this race who best reflects those values. Choosing the right congressman will not be difficult this year. Carl Snow, U.S. Congress. To do the job right, you need the right tools. Industrial Supply makes it easy to do the job right with professional tools and supplies and expert service. Save now on Durable Ames Tools, famous for American-made quality for over 200 years. Round point or square mouth American made brand shovels or 14 inch rake, your choice now, $8.25 each. Five cubic foot contractor's wheelbarrow, only $59. Come to Industrial Supply for the right tools and supplies for any job you do. Mom, are you sure you can handle this? No problem, kiddo. Ah, the virtues of milk. Here we go. Milk helps supply protein for working muscles. Magnesium for the old hand-eye coordination. Milk is surprisingly slim on calories, yet high in carbohydrate when you need a sudden burst of energy. Is that already? Yep. I've even got some left over. Milk. Left over? It does a body good. There's a look at Falcon Stadium on this snowy day in Colorado Springs. 13:31 left third quarter. Each week, Geneva Steel contributes $1,000 to the BYU Athletic Scholarship Fund in the name of the Geneva Steel man of the game. We'll be naming that player a little bit later. Jason Jones returns it up to the 24-yard line. He's a good return man. That catch by...
Boyce gives him six receptions today for 85 yards. And here is the pass to Andy. Catches it right on the goal line. And um, you just make sure that you catch that one. In the first half, Detmer had 14 completions in a row. The 18 is the record for BYU. So uh, he was there close. Boyce and Detmer doing a little hand slapping on the sidelines. Detmer said just got the wind knocked out of him. He's okay. Perez with the option. Turns it upfield. Takes a shot. Rocky Beagle there, the first man to meet him at the 26-yard line. Now, see, Josh Arnold didn't do much. It doesn't look like it that he's doing much, but he plays his position really well. He's going to try and stay in position that he could close down and make the quarterback tackle, or he could go ahead and tackle the pitch man. And he's out there playing it soft, and if he forces the quarterback back inside, then he's supposed to have help from pursuit from inside. A pick up a three, second down and seven for the Falcons. Fumble on the play, and who's got it? Cougars at the 25. They signal they have it. The White Hat's the guy that knows who has it. And, and the Falcons, yeah, retain. Pat Swinney says no. Yeah, and Eddie Green came out and says, what are you talking I've got the football. I've, this is it right here. This is the game ball we're playing with. And he says, no, young man, the other way, the other way. And it doesn't matter whether he did or didn't. He makes the call. Sweeney calls it. Boy, it looked like Perez never really had control no, off the didn't. snap. Perez backed out without the ball. It uh, dribbled right to the ground. It is pretty amazing that anybody but BYU does have it. <laughs> the officials say that uh, an Air Force player had the ball and Green ripped it out from under the pile. Clock running, 12 minutes left, third quarter. Perez with the pitch. And a nice run by the freshman, Obasi Onaha. Onaha. <laughs> out of Lincoln, Nebraska. That's He's a right. scat back, 167, 5'10". And they like what he saw. They saw with him last week against Utah. Here they come with the option. Now he makes an early read and pitches it. And see now Giles can't recover in time to help with the pitch. Now you see that lead blocker out there blocking on Hanson, which allows the uh, Onaha to make the first down. First and 10 at the 34. First back through is Jason Jones and maybe a yard. Uh, again, they ran end over that time, so the split end was on the same side of the field as the tight end. So there's no wide receiver or any eligible receiver on the left side. And the two times they've run that so far, Air Force has run to the narrow side of the field with the fullback. They're hoping that they can uh, create an imbalance and get him up field. He did fumble the football, but they again, so, uh, he recovered it himself. Second down, nine. A pass. Perez batted down at the line of scrimmage by Giles. <laughs> well, what a game he's having. He's saying, why didn't I catch it? You know, he steps right in front. Nice job. Now, this, I think, uh, wasn't a real good play selection for the defense BYU had on. BYU had a crowding defense with the uh, secondary, and it was just a quick hitch pass to the wideout. Falcons have played well at home this year, uh, Mark Lyons. Four and one on their home field. The Cougars on the road, winning at UTEP and then losing at Oregon. This is only their this is only their third road game of the season. Right, and they, they have a lot of road trips left. Third down, eight. Perez again. Play action. In trouble. Throws the ball downfield. Picked off. Crutchfield, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's gonna go. Touchdown, BYU. Well, uh, nice pick by Crutchfield, and what an outstanding run after he made the catch. Now, Perez made a poor choice, but he was in trouble. Uh, he, he had to throw the football. They're looking at third and long. Made a, a poor choice, though, and not being able to get enough behind the football, and Crutchfield stepped underneath. Crutchfield's second interception of the season, and he runs this one back for a touchdown. 29-0 with the extra point to come. Now with uh, Kaufman missing, you know, you have a little trouble because they do kick off the grass now. And uh, he has a little trouble handling the football, a little more trouble with the cold ball, and also uh, with your plant foot as you make the kick. Voice the holder. And the kick is up. And good. And he drilled that one without any questions. Cougars with two quick touchdowns to open up the third quarter. And BYU with a 30 to nothing lead.
The Murdoch boys are surrounded by more Suburbans than they can handle, including this special breed of Brandywine Suburbans indigenous only to Murdoch Chevrolet. Whoops, one just got away! Plus these special paint packages that are really hard to hold on to, and there are even more on the way. To make room, the Murdochs have bagged a special deal on this Silverado 350 V8 half-ton 4x4 with air, power windows, cruise, and cassette for only $18,986. So hurry, with deals like these, there's bound to be a stampede! See some of the country's top cowboys compete in the Dodge Ram Tough Wilderness Circuit Finals Rodeo. Coming to the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, November 15th, 16th, and 17th. Opening night is KSL Wrangler Family Night with free admission for all kids 12 and under. See bareback riding, steer wrestling, calf roping, bull riding, and more in this PRCA-sanctioned event. Tickets are on sale now at these locations where you can also get a free ticket with the purchase of any Wrangler jeans. Don't miss the Dodge Ram Tough Wilderness Circuit Finals Rodeo. Times were different in Utah in the 1920s. The average working man had no access to credit. Carl S. Little worked to organize credit unions in Utah because he believed that every working man and woman should be able to establish credit in their own name. And Carl believed that would allow them to more fully participate in the American dream. Utah's credit unions, a whole different picture. Craig Bowler, Jack, Mark Lyons, and Doug Miller back at the Air Force Academy. Close game at half, 17-0, and two quick touchdowns. Boyce, a 36-yard reception from Detmer. Crutchfield just picked off Perez and ran it back 36 yards, and just like that, it's 30 to nothing. The whole key has been BYU's defense. Here's the return. Faison up the middle. Good blocking. And Faison, the D-back who uh, moonlights as a kickoff returner. And he's a good one. Brings it up to the 26-yard line. Here's Crutchfield. You can see uh, he's lined up, and they're also uh, we're showing the outside linebacker who's going to get pressure. Perez does end up out here to the right, and he's going to try and throw to his tight end. So he fakes the counter dive, does a nice job of faking, but look at the outside linebacker pressure. That's Giles. He's got him in the grasp. He throws the football, and there uh, Crutchfield picks off the ball. Thank you very much. Takes it back 36 yards. And Perez with the keeper. And he is met head on by Mark Smith, the nose guard. Hit him up high. It really has been a defensive effort today that's uh, uh, put BYU in the driver's seat of this football game as they have really limited Air Force's wishbone all day long. And uh, Air, Force, uh, Air Force is in a tough spot now because they're down 30 points. Uh, they don't throw a lot, and they're going to have to now. There's Fisher looking for that right play. Rodney Lewis, the fullback. Perez with the pitch. Zoidrick in trouble. Ooh. Takes a shot and buried at the 20. Rocky Beagle there coming up off the pile again. Number 91, Mark Smith. Yeah, Mark Smith, really. And, you know, when the lineman makes the play on the option, there is no option. When a lineman beats his blocker and he gets over there in the quarterback, see, look, it starts with Harston. Harston's out there, so now all oh, there's Patisi Manu and everybody, and there's Smith. Boom. Oh, ow. Well, that's one, of those, that's one of those hits on a cold day that bring tears to your eyes. We, we call that a fish hit because <laughs> the guy just kind of flounders around out there. <laughs> Air Force with a new look. Man in motion. They got away with the procedure, didn't they? And Perez thrown for a loss, Patisi Manu. And the Falcons really, right now, just cannot get things together. Yeah, they're having a real hard time against BYU's defense. BYU's really controlling everything they're doing. So Jason Christ with a 43-yard average and to punt the football away. His longest kick of the season, 82 yards. Hey, he's a good punter. He's second in the whack right now in net punting, and so... Uh, Kicks the ball well. A high snap. Bellini back. Takes it at midfield. Bellini at the 20. And what a return for Bellini down at the 18-yard line. Yeah. Nice job. But, uh, Bellini knows he just needed one more, one more move. Nice middle return. On middle return, they try and wall off both sides. And you see the blocking coming up and doing 
a good job of shielding through the first three received th first three defenders then he's on his own a 32 yard punt return by Bellini and Detmer stays in at quarterback Stacy Corley in the game lines up in the slot to the left straight up the middle Salito maybe got back to the line of scrimmage Lane Bean he's a former tight end now a defensive tackle makes the stop the Air Force has had to juggle a few people in order to get the right personnel out there on their defense and so uh, they're their front people their linemen they use quite a they use quite a different quite a few different combinations their secondary stays pretty much intact second down 12 a loss of two on the play Bellini lines up slot to the left Detmer wants to throw across the middle a sliding attempt made down at the five incomplete yeah, that was the middle of the field again where where they've had success all afternoon but there wasn't Chris Smith was it was he thrown to Chris Smith See, Detmer can chuckle about it now because <laughs> because the score is a little bit out of hand. He's saying, yeah, I don't know why I can throw it sometimes, and sometimes I can't. Nyberg checks in with the play. 22 of 30 for 288 yards, two TDs. He still hasn't got 300. 19 consecutive games with 300 yards passing. Detmer back to the air. Got a man, Nyberg, down at the three-yard line. I'll be darned. He's got 301. Now he also hasn't been sacked today so that gives him uh, 301 yards of total offense which he also has a string going of total offense along with 300 yard games. Nice throw by Detmer. He's been just he's just been uh, well you know he's been uh, outstanding. He's just thrown extremely well and yet on the other hand he's had some wide open receivers today too that he hasn't quite gotten the ball to it. He is about a bit confused as to why it goes so well sometimes. The pitch to Stacy Corley turns it up, dives in, touchdown! Oh, what a play! Up and over. Oh, here comes Ty. Going to give him a pop. <laughs> <laughs> a two-timer. Stacy says thanks a lot, Ty. Boy, that was a great job by uh, Corley to go up and over. A nice job again out in front by the uh, BYU line people. Corley likes to run the corners, but this time he ran it north and south. And right up over the back. Looked like of Kime and May. And another touchdown here in the third quarter for BYU. Detmer took it, <laughs> dished out a harder hit, though, and Corley took it to the goal line. <laughs> Kaufman to try the point after a high snap. Boyce brings it down and kicks it through. So Kaufman connects. And the Cougars up their lead 37 to nothing. 727 left in the third. We'll be back. Mazda trucks. How many other compact pickups are ranked highest in their class in truck customer satisfaction? And how many others also get you the Mazda value pack? 13 extra features at no extra charge. Extra value worth up to $904. How many? This many. If you want the value of a Mazda, get a Mazda. At your Utah Mazda dealer, now. We sent him to Washington to fight for Salt Lake County, and he has like no one else. Against all odds, he took on the federal bureaucrats to pass the Central Utah Water Project, vital to Utah's economic future. He saved thousands of jobs at Geneva Steel, blocked the Thousand Springs Power Plant, which threatened our air and economy, and won a government apology and compensation for Utah's nuclear test victims. Wayne Owens, fighting and winning for Salt Lake County. I never thought I'd ever need glasses, or that I'd ever be reading financial journals, and I never thought I'd drive anything from an American car company. Times change. You change. New systems, new standards, new thinking, new times. Mercury Tracer. It's built to change your mind. All this and the quality of a Mercury. And some of the crowd here at Falcon Stadium in their cars. Fair weather yeah. fans, you know. They're, <laughs> they're out of here. 37 to nothing, Cougars. They've really uh, put this game 
out of, uh, well, it's not out of reach, but let's just say it's uh, not looking good for the Air Force Academy. 37 to nothing as Kaufman kicks it in the end zone. Give your child the important gift of a college education. Ask a Piper Jaffrey broker to help you create a sensible plan. Doug Miller. Leg braces are something you see showing up more and more on the BYU players, especially in this game with the cut blocks that Air Force used. A lot of leg injuries. This is a brace that was used last year by a linebacker. You can see the warp in it. This saved a leg. That brace should be straight. It's that kind of impact that uh, a brace like this will absorb, especially when you're shot from the side. And the linebackers, you see Ty Detmer with one on both legs now, mostly for insurance or protection. Falcons back on offense. Perez with the keeper, breaks it up the middle at the 40, the 50. Follows a blocker up to the 35, still on his feet, and tackled at the 30 by Rocky Beagle. Now one of the concerns that people have about Perez is they say he's not fast enough. And he's not as fast as uh, D. Dallas, but he's certainly fast enough to run the option. And this certainly evidences it because uh, you see the outside linebacker closed right down into the dive, and he was supposed to have option or right when he ran by uh, the BYU defender. Nice job by Gray to fight, 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 slow him down, force him to cut back, and good job by Pursuit. Uh, BYU in order to make that tackle. A 51-yard run by Perez. Yeah, who's down? There is a player down right now. I think it's an Air Force player. So uh, as quickly as, uh, you know, the, the Air Force in running the wishbone, that's the idea is that we're going to run it and run it and run it until finally somebody pops one. Everybody blocked right. Everybody picked everyone. The lead back locked on their right defender and zoom there goes the big play and it has that potential all the time Rodney Lewis uh, shaken up on that play he's up and on the sideline he was one of the blockers downfield right. leading, it, leading it for Perez 51 yard run for Perez down to the Cougar 29 Perez the handoff Jason Jones may break it 10 5 touchdown And here come the cadets. They pour out of the stands to do their push-ups. They're excited now. And in the two plays, Air Force goes the 80 yards. As Lewis, or excuse me, Jones bounces off the first tackler, and uh, he knows which way to go once he gets turned around toward the goal line. Ends up making the touchdown. And see, that's the explosiveness of wishbone. It's just that BYU's done such an outstanding job of defending it all day. Jason Jones, his fifth touchdown this season. And the kick after by Joe Wood is good. And the push-ups are to come. We'll be back. The trouble with most heating systems is the way they let your house get too warm while they're running, then too cold in between cycles. Now there's a better way. The Pain Plus 90i, the intelligent furnace that continuously adjusts the amount of heat it creates to precisely maintain constant comfort. And while it gives you more comfort, it uses less energy because every pain is built to save you money. See this pain dealer for a $150 rebate. Mountain Valley Sheet Metal in Pleasant Grove. We sent him to Washington to fight for Salt Lake County, and he has like no one else. Against all odds, he took on the federal bureaucrats to pass the Central Utah Water Project, vital to Utah's economic future. He saved thousands of jobs at Geneva Steel, blocked the Thousand Springs Power Plant, which threatened our air and economy, and won a government apology and compensation for Utah's nuclear test victims. Wayne Owens, fighting and winning for Salt Lake County. And the Academy on the scoreboard here in the third quarter, 647. And they did put together an impressive drive. The wishbone clicking Perez with the big run to set it up. Jason Woods takes it the final 29 yards. And this crowd finally was something to cheer about. 37 to 7. Cougars with the lead. Yeah, those two play 80-yard drives certainly do put you on the scoreboard in a hurry. A short kick. It's picked up by number 31, Brad Clark. And he's still on his feet, battling up to the 45-yard line. Of course, Clark, a popular kickoff cover man, and also this time having a little glory on the return end of it. There's number 31, Brad Clark. 
Cougars with good field position. Question is, will Detmer come on the field? Yes. Detmer trots back on with 6.38 left, third quarter. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. It's still the third quarter, and, and when Air Force can put points on the board in two plays, 37-7 uh, to seven would be uh, quite a remarkable comeback, and yet I think BYU wants to uh, get back control of the game. Detmer, play action. Good protection, steps up in the pocket, fires it to his tight end, Chris Smith. The defender fell down, and Smith turned it upfield. Number 33, Antoine Banks, the free safety, just a yard or two away from Smith, lost his footing, and Chris turned it, picked up another five to 10 yards. He's just so open. Uh, now, see, Ty uh, isn't extremely tall, but he throws right down the middle of the field here. He certainly is able to get the ball uh, up the middle, but Chris Smith is just wide open right there in the center of the field. And McDonald came over to put him down. First and 10 at the 32 of Air Force. Detmer passes again. Nadi Valdez, the catch, and then the drop at the 25. <laughs> uh, he, he, uh, I think he could have had that football. It was a little bit low, but uh, he uh, should be planning that. It was a comeback pattern where he's just going to come out and hitch, and uh, he's got both his feet planted in order to adjust to the football. Wasn't able to make the catch. There's Lavelle Edwards. Got his park is zip tight. He said he was going to dress warm today. Uh, looks like he's okay. <laughs> Second down. Voice in motion. Detmer on the roll. Voice the sliding grab at the 19. Yeah, at the middle of the field again. I'm surprised that Air Force has decided. They haven't blitzed much at all today. All their pressures come from their front five, with two outside backers and three down people. And uh, they played zone secondary all afternoon, and they haven't they haven't mixed things up very well. And when you see that things are see, look at Bellini. Bellini's saying I still got a shot here too. But Boyce makes the catch, slides, and uh, I'm surprised Air Force hasn't changed things up just a little bit more. 5:45 left to play, third quarter. Detmer the handoff. Salito stacked up. Tui Pelotu. Tui Pelotu, 32, and Salito, 22. And that was uh, Peter uh, off right tackle, skipping and hopping, picked up a couple of yards. 4-2, yeah, it was 4-2. It looks like he got four yards. Four yards. <laughs> yeah, and that time, uh, Air Force came with a little bit of a stunt up front and slanted their linemen. Still, it wasn't a lot. Second down and six on the 16. Detmer pedal back. Pumps once. He's got some running room. Detmer's going to tuck it. Stumbles up to the eight. Yeah, use the balance drill. When you start to trip out there, uh, teams have been teaching this in agility drills forever. As you use that extra hand as a third leg, and you try and just walk it along and walk it along and try and get your balance back. You'll see here he loses his footing. Quarterbacks get used to running with the ball out there. So there's balance one, two, and then reach up for the extra yard. All 175 pounds of him. You know, Detmer slithery. He never really takes a hard shot. Fortunately for him. Corley. Ooh, he can't get in. And there's a flag. Flag down at the 10-yard line. Corley chased down at the two. But a holding call against BYU. They'll uh, push the ball back. But, you know, going back to Detmer and the way he runs, some quarterbacks, they tend to straighten up. Holy, holy. Yeah. Honey, and they'll, they'll, they'll take a yeah, shot. Yeah, Detmer, no though, down. turns a bit sideways. And, and yeah. really never takes a hard a hard lick. Tries to uh, not ever have his feet planted when he gets hit. Uh, you do try and just turn yourself so they get a bad angle every time they hit you. You know, when you, when he, the place that he gets in trouble, of course, is when he gets sacked sometimes, when he's pinned in and uh, he gets a shot there. First and goal to goal at the 18. Quick flip out to Matsuzaki. I think he was trying to get the swing out there to Peter. Got a third quarter score from Fort Collins. Colorado State 11 and the unbeaten Cowboys of Wyoming 6. Aren't those Wyoming? They are, they are uncanny on how they trail in games, trail in games, and end up pulling it out. 
So uh, it looks they've been they were down 11 nothing and now uh, they're fighting their way back. 424 on the clock third quarter. Detmer with the rollout all the time he needs. Now he's finally chased down Rod Steffen. <laughs> Now they made an error and got away with it. As Detmer comes out on the bootleg, the outside and the contain guy, the guy that has to keep him inside, he bit on the play, play, play fake and he was all the way down inside. Let's see if we can see on the left. See that 82 come flying in? So Detmer could have run this thing, but now they've got excellent coverage downfield. Everybody's taken an inside pursuit by Air Force gets Detmer down. Now they're looking at third and plenty. Third and 19. Goal to goal. A quick pass downfield at the five yard line. Boyce. They're going to give him a catch, I think. Nobody knows. The Falcons uh, indicate no catch, but the official on the scene, they, they spotted at the five. Yeah, that's Boyce's uh, eighth reception today, and that'll give him just over 100 yards. Smith has six receptions for 105, so together, that looks. Pretty, oh, look at that. He does. He hands it right on his shoulder pad. Together, those guys have a little over 200 yards today in catches. And so uh, they've kind of let them have free reign out there in the secondary. Earl Kaufman will kick. Now, they aren't going to get this off in time, but they're going to go ahead and take a delay penalty and uh, move him back five yards for the challenge. <laughs> a a five-yard penalty back to the 10. We have a dead ball. On the offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. This is the second time today, however, that the uh, field goal team hasn't gotten on and gotten set, and I think the special teams coaches are going to talk to them about that in practice this week, that uh, if it were a, a dire, important kick and they're out of timeouts, they need to get that part of the game taken care of. But they could have rushed it. They could have gotten it ready, and I think they would have had it teed in time, but they recognize five yards won't make much difference in this area of the field. Coffin with a 36-yard field goal just before half. This one he tries to chip through, and it's good from 27 yards out. <laughs> oh, just got, just got the ball inside the goalpost. That's why. The V8-powered Mercury Cougar XR7. It comes with speed-sensitive steering. Anti-lock brakes. A new high output V8 that's pure adrenaline. Which means the top dog is now a cat. All this on the quality of a Mercury. FM 100 is now playing all vocal. It's the only station that plays all my favorite artists. Neil Diamond, Dionne Warwick, James Taylor. What I'd call the best of the best. Light FM 100. Light favorites, less talk. They play more music. That's what I listen to the radio for. Have you tried Light FM 100? Finally, something different. I never would have listened to them before, but now they play a mix I can really enjoy. For light favorites with less talk, turn on the light. Light FM 100. Back at the Air Force Academy, 2.52 left to play, third quarter, 40-7. to seven. After a 27-yard field goal by Kaufman, and he kicks it away. Takes a bounce in the end zone, and the Falcons will start up on the 20. Detmer today, uh, so far, is 26 for 37, 353 yards. I'm trying to figure that percentage. Darn it, I don't have a calculator with me, but uh, it's got to be up there in that 66-plus range, which is what he's been hitting. I'm disappointed. You usually carry that calculator with you. Well, yeah. Oh, it's 70%. Well, usually I'm able to snap those <laughs> off with my fingers. <laughs> So a, a, a remarkable day for Ty into the conditions. Two touchdowns, no interceptions thus far. Right. Air Force Academy back in the wishbone. And the handoff goes to Obasi. If, if they got a different center, and I'm going to see if the last two snaps that Air Force has run, the center seems to be getting just a little bit of a, a jump on everybody. There's some of the fans that are left. These guys are bundled up, though. A minute ago, some people were out there in there. Well, they were topless. <laughs> we saw a few. A couple of guys uh, decided to get the crowd going uh, just before we came back from the commercial break and uh, was running around the stands uh, with their shirts off. It's a cold day. Two 
two-yard pickup. Perez with the keeper, turns it upfield, and still on his feet, fumbles! And I believe Josh Arnold got a arm around the pickskin, and it's Cougar football at the 37. Yeah, he, just as he starts upfield here again, he does a nice job because once he gets by the outside containment who's supposed to play him, it's been playing just a little bit soft. Right there, he gets by the end man. Arnold gets blocked, who's out there hurrying to the pitch. But now here come these guys, and they just stripped the ball. That's uh, Crutchfield. Crutchfield. Crutchfield stripped it, and Arnold, Josh it's Arnold, recovery. recovered it. And Ty Detmer trots on the field again. First and 10 at the Air Force 37. 2.04 left to play third quarter. Salito, the handoff, runs it off the left side and lowers a shoulder pad down outside the 29-yard line. A flag thrown. Been pretty much error-free as far as penalties today. These officials have done a good job to let them play. Minute 58 here left in the third quarter. The first half flew by, didn't it? I mean, we were uh, out of this first half in just over an hour. And uh, now that this third quarter seems to be bogging down a bit. <laughs> as far as time goes, certainly not as far as what we're seeing in the play. Salito uh, sure drew a crowd. Three blue jerseys uh, took a shot at him. The penalty puts the ball at the Air Force 42. Five penalties for BYU for 45 yards, and Air Force is just clean. One for five. First and 15 at the 42. Detmer wants to pass. Chris Smith all day, wide open. Nothing different here. And he uh, is driven down at the 33. Now they move the outside linebacker out there to play him a little bit more obviously as he comes up field. So this time Chris knows that that uh, linebacker has been paying attention to him up the middle. So he makes his turn to the outside of the field. Detmer picks him up. And then he uh, runs with a football. And Pretty Bobby good. Thompson, one of the cornerbacks, uh, put a shoulder into him. And now officials call time. Now they're trying to, yeah, they're mad at 45. Those officials are mad at him. Bowers, Jason Bowers, an outside linebacker. I'll bet they went out and checked his mouthpiece and it wasn't regulation. It made him go. Second down, Detmer with the play take. Downfield, Andy Boyce, been busy all day. Middle of the field. 18-yard line, another Boyce, big chunk of yardage for Detmer, closing in on 400 yards. I see if they would pinch down, BYU's linemen are all big, tall guys, and, and Ty isn't as tall or as big as those guys, but look, he still sees well down the middle of the field. Now Air Force pushes and pushes down inside and takes that vision away from him. He gets pressure there pretty close, but he's still uh, able to have a lane of throwing right down the middle of the field. That was BYU's 18th first down passing. There's a blitz. Detmer goes under. And they should throw a flag here. Well, he got the shuffle pass off, and they're going to allow it because he did have a receiver out there. But Now, th this is pretty tough. Uh, Doug, what did you think? I see. You know, he does get pressured here. He's got the blitz coming. The outside linebacker comes free, and he slides off him, but he sees a shuffle here. Oh, uh, no. Uh, I'll yeah. throw the flag there. Yeah. The rule says that if he is uh, getting rid of the football in order to avoid the sack, <laughs> that's pretty close. There was a receiver in that direction, but I, I think he was attempting to avoid the sack. Second down again at the 19. Detmer again, back to pass, the law, Bellini, touchdown. There's a flag. They're gonna pull this one back, unless it's roughing. Holding. Holding, maybe a makeup call, huh? Well, I wonder why doesn't he have time to make the call last time and make it up. <laughs> That's too bad for Matt, because uh, Matt's the leading receiver in BYU history and also in yards, and he's, I think, just four away in touchdowns. And he hasn't had the ball a whole lot today. 
And uh, that's too bad. He runs a nice out and up pattern, gets open on the sideline, and it's uh, taken away from him. You know, checking Detmer's stats today, he's already bypassed Scott Mitchell on the NCAA all-time passing list. Also, Tom Hudson. So he's moved up to 12th place all-time on the NCAA list. Next in line is Mark Herman. Oh, Mark Lyons, I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, yeah, he got me last week, I think. <laughs> Was that last week he <laughs> finally caught you? Second down 20 on the Air Force 29, and Detmer likes to roll out to his left. Matsuzaki, Ooh, yes, the catch made at the 10. Now, this is that roll. Uh, Doug, come in. Not yeah, go ahead, Doug. Now we're up here in the middle of some Cougar fans. These guys, are, you drove all the way down from Denver, is that right? Yep. Denver? Denver. 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 From Denver. Are you guys having trouble staying warm up here? Oh, no, we're used to that. What do you think of the stadium? Much of the Air Force fans over here have uh, left. Do you have any, I mean, what's your reaction to that? They're too cold and they're too far behind. <laughs> Well, as you can tell, uh, we generate our own kind of heat over here in the, the Cougar section of the end zone. Rick. All right, Doug Miller, Salito, the handoff, turns it up the left side, out of bounds at the four. Yeah, Doug looked like he was keeping warm, sandwiched yeah. in between uh, Packed some in there. there. I couldn't find him down there. I guess that's why we we're having a hard time seeing him. I want to talk about Matsuzaki and Detmer because that is that comeback pattern where he runs down about 20 yards and plants the foot. Detmer reads, as soon as the foot plants, he then comes back to make the catch, and uh, Detmer delivered the ball way before Mitsuzaki had made his final cut and throws the ball as soon as uh, Micah turned around. Poof, right in the numbers. 29 for 41, 405 yards now for Ty. And he just tied Mark Herman <laughs> for 11th all-time NCAA passing. And you might run this one in. Detmer, plenty of rooms, got an alley, flips the ball, and... In and out of the hands of Chris Smith. Oh, -ho. good coverage by the Falcons. Number 25, Shannon Yates, the Falcon back, made Chris. it tough on Chris Smith. Yeah, Chris had it in his hands and then almost had the rebound. Yeah, nice job out there. And see, he almost gets that rebound and then everybody collapses on him. And it draws a lot of attention. Two seconds left in this third quarter. Second down and four. Cougars trying to add to that 40 to seven lead. That's a good looking helmet. <laughs> Detmer sends Bellini in motion. Pedals back, a quick pass. Boyce, his third touchdown of the day. So they pick it up with the uh, pass. Boyce is able to catch the football real well. He runs an inside slant out of the slot position. And uh, Ty was a little easier on him that time after that reception. Nobody left, you know. Now, see, he's looking at Bellini. He came right off to see if uh, they'd gone out with him. He, they did. So then he makes his second read to Boyce coming on the slant. Boyce, his third touchdown reception. And the Cougars with the point after. Kaufman boots it. And it's 47 to 7. That ends the third quarter. And the fourth quarter to come. Cougars with a 40 point lead. I seen this gosh dang funny tape the other day. This is a Farley family reunion. It's kind of a tape of a family reunion. Pretty funny. I kind of split my gut. <laughs> watch it with your family. Watch it with your horse. Watch it with your dog. Even my dogs are laughing. <laughs> Pretty good. For the people who headed west, the promise of a new life wasn't without some old familiar problems. You and Scotty take care, Mrs. Perkins. <laughs> Doctor, Bill Coombs mayor just tangled with some barbed wire. I'm on my way. Years ago, the fastest line between someone in need and someone who could help were the people of U.S. West. Hello, Dr. Maxwell's office. Oh, I'm sorry, the doctor just left. 
Today, the companies of U.S. West continue to pioneer innovative connections between your time and your needs. I'm almost there. Just make her comfortable. And, Mr. Garcia, I, I'm running late. I'd like to forward my calls to your stable, okay? Sure. Just hurry. As always, you can count on U.S. West to help you manage the business of life. He's gonna be just fine. Phone call, Dr. Hill. Mom, Bridget had five puppies. Oh, they're so cute. Nice going, Doc. U.S. West, making the most of your time. Tasting fresh. Delicious. Tasting so good. Chuck-a-rama. Tasting just what I want. Like homemade. Tasting so much more for my money. Chuck-a-rama. Tasting so many choices. Fresh fruit and salads. Entrees and specialties. Tasty side dishes. Dessert bar and a drink. Taste it all at a sound bar price. Tasting sensational. Chuck-a-rama, the tastiest buffet in town. Tasting better than ever. Well, tomorrow night on the Lavelle Edwards Show, get game highlights and up-close interviews with the players and, of course, ask the coach. We'll also outline next week's game with San Diego State. Check that. Wyoming. <laughs> that all on the Lavelle Edwards Show. Tomorrow night at 11, right after Sports Beat Sunday. Yeah, the Cowboys coming up next week in Laramie. It's 40-7 to 7 here yeah, at the Air Force Academy, and Earl Kaufman boots it away. A squib kick picked up at the 20. You see shadows out there. I actually see sunlight. That's right. There are shadows out there on the field. Look at Air Force hustle out on the field right now. Well, BYU scored uh, 30 points in the third quarter. They had the ball five times, scored four touchdowns and one field goal in those five possessions. They played the whole third quarter uh, inside their 50-yard line, except for the one run by Perez and the touchdown by uh, Air Force. Falcons start up on the 35-yard line. Perez with the pitch. And the Cougars pursue Onaha, the freshman, chased down by Norm Dixon, the strong safety. Did you say Onaha was from Omaha or Lincoln? From Lincoln. Oh, yeah. Onaha from Lincoln. That's right. The sun's actually punched through a little hole in the crowd here. You mentioned the shadows on the field. You can see it's uh, still hazy, high clouds here, but... Uh, it's also still snowing, and it's still 26 degrees. Second down, nine. Play action. The pass thrown. Giles, or Giles, had Perez. Uh-oh, here comes the late one. Uh-oh. Had to reach in his back pocket, <laughs> and Perez throws his arm in disgust. Did you see how long ago it took Pat Sweeney to find his hanky? Well, it was deep in there. I could tell it was deep. But did you see how quickly Fisher <laughs> to Berry reacted after it was thrown? Uh, that Pat, is Pat Sweeney had to dig for that hanky. He's got those big, thick gloves on his hand. He couldn't get a hold of it in that back pocket. The loss of down as well. Now, the people that are here are saying, I can't believe that because I just saw the BYU guy. Look at Fisher. <laughs> he threw it. He was saying he threw it just like this. Well, uh, maybe that's there. Uh, he's demonstrating the, the pass. <laughs> I, I think he's got a legitimate concern. Yeah, I do too. Third down, 24. Perez in trouble. Regained his balance and then downed at the 19 by Fatisa Manu. <laughs> Some people are concerned, uh, other than Fisher to bury out there, but. But he's got everybody moving back, and he says, I'll talk to the ref. I'll talk to the ref. Now he's going to say, come here. Nope, he didn't. Uh, you know, it, as a coach's point of view, you just saw BYU get away with something very similar, and uh, this time uh, Perez couldn't have enough behind the ball to get it out there, and they get the penalty call. Jason Christ into punt on his own five-yard line. The Cougars send a rush, and Christ off the side of his foot. Still gets a good bounce. Bellini fumbles and then drops on it at the 34-yard line. Evans has been warming up on the sideline. He will go in the series. Ty Detmer will take the rest of the day off. So Joe Evans will quarterback the Cougars when we come back. The Carpet Giant has a recipe for beautiful kitchens. Say goodbye to your old kitchen floor and replace it with a new long-wearing Easy Care Congolium vinyl. 
And here's a recipe for saving. Come to the Carpet Giant for the lowest prices and the biggest selection of Congolian vinyl anywhere. Come in before November 17th and save up to $3 per square yard on selected styles during the Congolian Triple Treat rebate sale. The Carpet Giant is cooking up great deals on Congolian vinyl. From Ogden to Orem, the Carpet Giant dwarfs them all. You? Yeah, me. Russ, you have no eye for color. I'm picking out the paint. I know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. You can do it, Russ. This True Test custom color system makes it easy to match colors, just like a decorator. Admit it, Ellen. I picked out the perfect colors. Yes, but <laughs> who would ever believe it? You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. Why is it that Salt Lake County has been singled out as one of the most efficient county governments in America? How is it that while the rest of the country is slipping into a recession, Salt Lake is listed by prestigious publications as the number one place to do business in the nation? Taxes have increased on city, state, and federal levels, so why haven't Salt Lake County taxes risen in over four years? Here's why. Government is working in Salt Lake County because Bart Barker puts people before politics. Bart Barker for County Commission. And there's the crowd left here at Falcon Stadium, and you can see they dressed for the weather today. That's kind of the BYU group. 47-7, to 13-19 left to play. And Joe Evans in for Ty Detmer. Hands it off to Charlton, number 43 for BYU. There he's demonstrating that pouch, that hand pouch. Joe Evans has completed 70% of his passes thrown this year. Uh, 7 for 10, 78 yards. He's a plus 10 yards per uh, kick completion, which you like. Cougars will uh, play a lot of the young players uh, here in the fourth quarter. Clock running, 12.45 left. Joe Evans, a junior out of Orem, Utah. And now flags down as he was trying to get it all the way down to one second and uh, took just a fraction more than one second. So they'll move that back five yards. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, right now, uh, Air Force Academy is going to get charged up and of course BYU's new people in there are going to say uh, I get a chance to play I'm going to do everything I can they're playing the two tight end formation little play action Evans will throw the football downfield and the catch made by number 95 Byron Rex knocked out of bounds at the 40 yeah that's that counter trap where uh Quarterbacks had pretty good success in getting outside away from that containment all day today. And then as they bring a crossing receiver against the grain, uh, he's able to get a step on his defender and, and ends up picking that five, six, ten yards. Third down five at the 39. Evans pedals back. A quick flip. Nice read by Evans because they brought two inside linebackers that time. Rex is out there making the reception again. He ran the quick out out of the double tight end. And uh, two inside linebackers came. Evans read that there's the blitz, so he went to his quick checkoff receiver. Tight end, open, and another first down. Now it's amazing. You see colleges around the country, how they use their, their backs, uh, their wide outs, their split ends. The tight end plays such a big part in this, uh, this offensive pass game for BYU. Well, absolutely. 11.47, clock running. Dawkins with the bliss. Got Charlton, big hole off the right side. Cuts it back outside at the 30. Ooh. He may go, 20, and then driven out of bounds. Nice recovery by the Falcons secondary. They're going to call a clipping penalty out there. and This is awfully close. The receiver does a nice job to get over there in this play and uh, make an effort to give Charlton. Charlton, I think, made an outstanding move when he made his cut left, looked like he was going to go straight up the middle of the field, and then made a terrific cut back to the right to the open side. 
And then the receiver tries to get out there. Let's see if we can pick it up. And you'll see how much effort he makes to try and make a legal block on that corner. But the corner turns on him just as he throws. Well, a nice block, too. A nice seal block by Jim Balmforth. And there's that. There's the clip they called just at the end. And Mike Rogers. Charles, a big, strong player. Outstanding athlete. He, he could have played professional baseball. Or maybe he does, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, he's in a Cougar uniform today. Several of us down here on the sideline wondering if you guys are warm enough up there. Comfortable? Heating a up. A little <laughs> toasty, Doug. <laughs> Another hot chocolate over here. First down, three. Stacy Corley turns the corner, gets the first down. Clock will stop. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Joe Evans putting together a pretty good drive. Picks up another first down, gives him another set of downs. Eric Drage coming in at wide receiver with a the play. There, there they are. There's the crazy guys. <laughs> a day at the beach. <laughs> yes. First down at the Falcon 36. Charlton keeps those legs running and he's inside the 20. Boy, Charlton, you are right. He gets off a quick step. He's a real high stepping type of yeah. runner. Good strong legs and he cuts real well. The thing I like about the play here is they just ran this play with the trap to the right and Charlton came up. Now they run with the trap to the left. You see Brian May coming across and trapping. And so uh, the BYU is ambidextrous in the trap. I'll say that again. <laughs> 11 02 left fourth quarter the pitch Stacy Corley and he nearly gets the first down maybe he did they spot it inside the orange uh, <laughs> marker down there he got the first down Corley nimble feet and all got the first right in front of the Cougar fans down there where he stepped out and they really gave him a cheer <laughs> Thought he was going to end up in their lap before he got it stopped. Nice block by Charlton. Wide receiver. Gets a favorable spot for the first down. You know, Corley is such a strong runner. If there is one dig against him, he doesn't like to run north-south. He really likes to turn the corner and, and string out a defense. First and goal at the seven. Charlton. Off right tackle. Cuts it back. Ooh. Touchdown, fumbles it, though. Did he get in? Yes. Took a hit at the goal line, but he reached out and broke the plane. A touchdown for BYU. It's the new call this year in college. They've gone to this call. We've seen it quite a bit. Iowa State got in with a questionable touchdown. Of course, the Colorado touchdown against Missouri. And uh, the officials are now saying if the man has control at the time the ball crosses the plane of the goal line, it is good. Uh-oh, is oh, that a, a holding? And you'll see he's going to reach. He reaches, and he's got the football over the goal, goal line, and then when he hits in the end zone, it pops free. Yeah, I saw a stretched jersey. Keith Lever will try the point after. A high snap and a low kick, but he drives it through. It just has to go through. Well, not a bad series uh, for Charlton. Four carries, 56 yards, and he caps it off with the seven-yard touchdown run. And the Cougars build a 54 to seven lead. The Accord from Honda. Once again, it's what the competition is shooting for. Nice shot. Heritage, Dolly, Peterson, Willie, Academy, and Garp. Your Utah Honda dealers. What do you want to do about lunch? Take out a loan. Oh. <laughs> Introducing Sizzler's Pick a Chicken Lunch. For the price of fast food, you can get your choice of three boneless breast of chicken entrees. Tangy lemon herb chicken. Avanchi chicken glazed with Japanese-style barbecue sauce. Or fajita seasoned Santa Fe chicken. Sizzler's Pick a Chicken Lunch. Your choice at a choice price. Well, we still got some time. What do you want to do? I still got some money. Mm. Shopping. Shopping. 
this campaign, I've been honored to represent Utah. Our values, our concerns, our pride. The support for change has been overwhelming. Utahns want fresh leadership. All the Republican parties, the party for jobs, the party for industry, the party for families, the party for education, the party for women. We're for you, both Barbara and me. And let's elect Genevieve Atwood to Congress. Back at Falcon Stadium, and it's getting a little bare. Yeah. Cheerleaders just held up a big banner, brought the crowd to their feet here in front of the BYU segment, uh, saying, Ty Detmer, the general of the Air Force. <laughs> Kaufman. Squibs it down the middle of the field, picked up at the seven. Hear those pads pop. Okay, here we can see, uh, we're gonna talk about Mike Kime as he pulls across. No, that's Balmfort. Nope, it's Neil Fort. Neil Fort's gonna come across and make this uh, trap play as the two outside guards and tackle are gonna try and influence. Boom, and here comes the trap with Fort. And there goes Charles up inside. Boy, nice. Corley, Corley. The guy. Corley's the guy that sprung him with that block out on the outside. Falcons start up at the 25-yard line. And a new quarterback is Jarvis Baker, a sophomore out of Fairfield, California. Where's number five? Josh Arnold made the stop. And he's the guy that they were using earlier in the season as they were still trying to make the decision as who's going to replace uh, the irreplaceable D. Dallas. And uh, these two guys have worked pretty hard, and, and I think uh, Perez has done a, a nice job at quarterback today. Baker tries the left side, turns it up, and he is met head on by a host of white jerseys. The BYU Cooper Club is committed to the academic and athletic excellence of BYU student athletes. Your membership is an investment in their success. Call I. 1-800, I am for BYU. Be part of the excitement. Got a cougar in your throat. <laughs> Clock running, 9.45 left, fourth quarter. Cougars will uh, go back to Utah with a dominant win. They'll stay unbeaten in conference play as the Falcons try uh, running it right up the middle. The stop made by big number 96. And it'll be a good experience for them. Of course, they do go back to uh, Laramie next week. And uh, I don't know that next week's going to be much different in Laramie, Wyoming. They'll probably have a cold, windy day uh, up there. And so uh, this will be a, a good experience for them to have this kind of game today to uh, be familiar with the conditions. Scott Moberly, number 96, made the stop. Third down and six on the... Falcon 39. Baker Ooh. fakes into the line, cuts it back up, and he's met and hit and brought down by Billy Bryan, the left linebacker. Well, you can see Alima Fatissimano. He has, he's had the dive guy most of the day, and he's the outside linebacker. And boy, he, he really crushed that fullback diving through that time. Fourth down, and Air Force is going to go for it. Fourth. And two, huh? A little more, little more than one. They like fullback, and of course they like the option. Come on, move back! They're going to have to hurry to get the play off. Four seconds, three. Baker gets it off with a second to spare. Baker turns it up. Will not get the first down. The Cougars, in fact, throw Baker for a, a yard loss. So BYU back on the field. Brad Hunter wrapped up Baker. Yeah, and Kafusi was a guy out there playing along with the pitch. And He's not sure. Baker said he had my face mask. Yeah, he did. And that's why I didn't make that first down. So the Cougars take over, first and 10. On every possession this second half, BYU has scored points. And so uh, they're gonna attempt to keep that string alive right now with favorable field position. And a lot of time, 8.07 on the clock. 
the pitch to Mortensen. Tries to turn the corner and uh, push down a bounds at the 42. That stops the clock. Eight minutes even. And now Mortensen holding that right leg. I'll tell you, it's a dangerous spot over there because you come from natural grass, Mark Lyons, mm -hmm. to kind of an artificial turf surface. Right, where everybody surface. stands. And you yeah. get a cleat stuck. Here's, here's the replay. So you don't get in that swampy stuff. Oh, I think he... Yeah, it looks like he uh, hit his leg on, on something. Yeah, ran into a... Looks like a sack of footballs there they have on the sideline for warm-ups. Tarleton gets the handoff, fumbles the football, and they're going to whistle it dead at the 43-yard line. Ooh, we would have had a chance to interpret the new fumble rule this year. The team fumbles behind the line of scrimmage. The defense cannot advance at this season. And so uh, that would have been a fumble behind the line. Air Force picked it up. However, the uh, referees decided that the fumble was made before he was down. They're still checking Mortensen over. Uh, we'll see if Doug Miller can update us on uh, his. Yeah, it's more serious than a kick into a bag of balls, isn't it? This situation. Air Force is walking uh, one of their players off. Tony Cates, 82. Kate's shaking up. It's time of day two, fourth quarter, cold day, a little tired, the legs. Yeah, they're working over Mortensen pretty tough. Of course, he's had a serious knee operation already. Looks like it's a right knee for Mortensen, and it's just they're just checking right now. I don't have a good word on it, but we'll check on it. Joe Evans pedals back on third down. Got a man open at the 30. I'm interested to see, you know, Joe Evans used the old stagger start, the Bernie Kosar position. Nadi uh, Valdez with the catch. Yeah, he's kind of the split Bernie, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the, the new look, I guess, for quarterbacks. And well, we didn't get a chance to see him taking the snap. He does really stagger the right foot back. Nice delivery. You know, he left hand points downfield. Boy, and that brings the left shoulder up so that he's able to make a delivery right to the man he's throwing to. Nice, nice throw. First down at the 30. Just over seven minutes left. And they hand the ball up the middle, trying just to wear the clock down. I think that's Charlton again. And no, it's not. Number 31 on the Cougar depth chart. That's Brad, Brad Clark. Clark. And uh, he chose not to go with his trap people. He chose to go straight up the field. Boy, they're, yeah, they're helping Mortensen off. We don't have a word on the serious nature of the injury yet, but you can see uh, Mortensen obviously in a lot of pain and also quite emotional. He knows that, uh, that he is going to be a problem, and he's getting some help getting off the field. So when you've been through that before, you know immediately what's wrong, and Mortensen dragging that right leg. Boy, really. There goes Brad Clark. Clark again, spinning and twisting his way up to the 12-yard line. Boy, Mortensen, too, worked so hard to come back. Yeah, you just... You just hope it's something else other than that uh, anterior cruciate. Sim Tia Tia, number 25, checks in. Nice job done that last play as they ran the uh, counter trap again also. And this time Clark goes out there with his trap people. And uh, they, get a, they give him an outstanding hole to run through out there. Well, the Cougars have uh, reeled off 28 first downs today, 20 by the pass and 8 by the run. Uh-oh. Flag down. Zundell, I believe, got a quick start. The tight end off the left side. You see, that's uh, Charlton there, who's a pretty big kid, and they're giving him toss sweep. So they certainly have confidence in uh, Charlton's speed that he's going to be able to get outside and gain yards for them on that play. BYU's had some interesting... Uh, Game so far this year as far as the polls go they yeah. won two whack games and dropped had a bye and they lost they lost ground in it doug just wanted to show you the shoe they're using today so much was said about traction uh, particularly after that oregon game both teams are using what they call long cleats the ncaa reg allows a three-quarter inch cleat this is typical of what both teams have today seems to have matched up with footing pretty well though even on the muddy snowy field here at falcon stadium charlton chased out of bounds you know, and the fields hold, held up extremely well today. I thought we'd see uh, smeared jerseys and have some troubles. And 
let the, that surface we thought would go. And boy, look at it. It's held it extremely well. So I think maybe they didn't have as much moisture as we were guessing. That's next week's matchup. BYU-Wyoming up in Laramie. Yep. BYU uh, has no home games left as they must go to Utah State and Utah and then Hawaii. They got Utah State in Provo. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, surprise. Well, okay, I'll be there. We'll be there. Clark. Up near the 10-yard line. They're one of the few teams that are left in the nation that still have four games, five counting today, four games remaining after today. Yeah, they'll play their final game uh, well, December 1st in Hawaii. You called it. Utah State is at Provo. So those of you that were making travel arrangements to Logan, <laughs> cancel that order. <laughs> I tell you what, we could really, uh, you know, the Cougars uh, could really be looking at some cold, snowy weather from here on out until you go to of course, if, we get, if we get snow in Hawaii, something's wrong. <laughs> Third down, nine. I'm not taking my ski. Sam Tia, Tia fumbles the football at the 10 yard line. On second effort, he coughed it up. They ran the counter trap, counter trap, and sweep. That's about all they've called here in this last series. They're giving BYU possession. Mike Jenkins in at guard, and the big guy at 6'8, 370 scooped up that loose football. <laughs> he is a big guy. Brent Smith now in at quarterback, number 15. And the Cougars will go for it on fourth and nine. And now seven seconds left. He's decided to call timeout. He has seven seconds left uh, in the clock. And yeah, some of the. Uh, <laughs> All right, we'll step aside. 412 left. 12 left here at uh, Falcon Stadium. A game of interest, Colorado State, fourth quarter, leading Wyoming 11 to 8 on their home field. Fort Collins, Colorado, fourth down here. And Brent Smith, the quarterback for BYU. Ooh, there's a hit. Flag thrown at the eight yard line. Brad Clark got the handoff, and he took a shot, and it looked like the, the yellow flag came out with that hit. Mark Moody. Made the uh, made the initial contact. Ooh, I'll tell you that was a hit. And see, uh, Clark went straight up field. He went he went right up where he had to go in order to try and pick that up. But uh, there was no missing that tackle. All right, let's check in with Doug Miller. Well, we got a flag down here. Chris Smith with me on the sidelines. Chris, uh, were you surprised at how easily you were able to control Air Force defensively? Well, they, in the film they just ran a, a four deep zone in every game that we watched. So we weren't too surprised that we were able to. Uh, move the ball as effectively as we were uh, with the pass. Just with their, the way they ran their zone, they left everything open. You had a great afternoon. Nicole, by the A little. As you can see, my helmet's still on. I'll, don't dare take it off. It's too cold. Great afternoon, man. Congratulations. Clock running. Falcons back on offense. Under four minutes. Yeah, they uh, that seemed to be their pattern. They just continued to stay with that strategy defensively. Well, I'm sure Brent Smith hopes he gets one more shot out there today. Baker stays in at quarterback. There's that little counter dive. The lead blocker. Pick you, up can, you can do some pretty creative things out of the uh, wishbone when you have those three, receive, three runners back there and everybody gets so used to the fullback, fullback, fullback. Uh, you can do some creative things. You, you really set up for a nice double team down with the tight end and tackle and two lead blockers. And see, here you get that lead off back, leading through the hole, and uh, gives you a, a good opportunity to have a lead blocker with a double team on your nose guard. Wayne Young uh, carried the football. That's the eighth running back that Fisher DeBerry has used today. They really mix it up. Baker wants to throw, airs it out downfield, the catch up and out of bounds. But a Ooh. nice catch made along the far sideline by Clarence Hopkins, number 80. Well, I'll say that was a nice catch. Now, what's he doing at Air Force, you know? A guy that can catch like that. <laughs> Learning to fly planes. That's right. Well, that's good. That was a great reception. Look at him go up for that. 
Nice catch. Goes down. That kid can catch the football. Well, for each BYU football game this season, Geneva Steele has asked the KSL sports team to select the outstanding player of the game and name him Geneva Steele Man of the game. The Geneva Steele Man can play offense or defense and sometimes is a player off the bench who does extremely well. And that player is linebacker Scott Giles as Baker runs it up near midfield and a late hit on Billy Bryant, number 44 for BYU. He's saying his momentum took him into it. And I'm glad, well, I'm not glad to see him get called for this, but I'm, I sure would like to see that kind of play uh, slowed down. You know, the pros get away with a lot, and we see it filter down into college, and it's even filtering down to high school. He's down, it's over, you see he gets blocked. He was pushed in But then to he Baker. does drill him. <laughs> he could have gone over the top. Scott Giles. Our Geneva player uh, did an outstanding job coming off his red shirt. And it's tough to give up a red shirt, uh, but when you go in and play all the time, uh, you know, I'm sure he feels very good about being able to contribute. And Geneva will contribute $1,000 in his name to BYU's athletic scholarship program to honor his performance. 2.33 left to play. Baker, the pocket collapse. He runs out of it. 30, 25, 20, and stops the clock at the 19-yard line. Say BYU on the day, you ought to give the Geneva Steel uh, Man Award to the entire offense. They've racked up 633 yards, total offense. And the defense. And the defense. <laughs> Detmer, 409 yards, they three hit. touchdowns, no interceptions. The defense just uh, shut everything down until just one drive. It's been uh, the middle of 1988, the last time they shut a team out. And so uh, they were looking at that with just one touchdown up there for Air Force. Uh, it was a good outing for both sides of the ball today. 225 left. There's Scott Giles. Nope. Yeah, there's Scott Giles. Chris Gray, the ball carrier. He's uh, taking it easy over there, and he just, I think he's just been told by Doug Miller that uh, he has been selected the Geneva player of the game. He said, Me? Moi? Hey, well, thank you. <laughs> he's a junior out of Provo. 6'4, 225. Around the football all day. He had a really big first half. Forced uh, an interception, forced a throw that created an interception for a touchdown. Wayne Young, the ball carrier. Mike Hogan, the guy making the tackle. And Mike's an interesting guy because he backs up both outside linebackers. Uh, Giles he, and Fatissimano, yeah. He plays either side. And, and uh, those guys get used to having, you know, you have to play with one foot up, whether, whichever side you play. And if you end up playing both sides, you also have, you know, it's a different skill. It's something you don't think about. An outside linebacker always has to have the same foot forward. So if he plays both sides, he has to adjust. Third down, four on the Cougar 13-yard line. Baker spreads it out, pitches it. And Jeremy Griffin, number 22, the freshman, is upended. Nice job of stringing it out as uh, BYU had good lateral pursuit and the cornerback got in a timeout. 101 Airport. left on the clock. 54 to 7. BYU looking ahead, uh, Mark Lines, next week. Air Force will travel to Army. Now they've already beaten Navy this year, 24 to 7. So next week, a big football game on hand for the Commanders and Chief Trophy. Yes, I'll say because uh, Air Force feels pretty good about uh, having an opportunity to do that. But they do have to win now their remaining two football games. And next week, BYU travels to Laramie for a showdown with the Cowboys. And fourth quarter score, Colorado State leading 11 to 8. Isn't that a beauty? You know, there's been, there must have been two safeties. Well, I guess they could have had a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a field goal for Colorado State's 11. But we knew it was 11 to 6 at one time, so we know that Colorado State gave up a safety sometime in the game. Interesting football game. Looks like it's been pretty defensive. I wonder if their weather. I imagine their weather has been pretty ugly today, too. Of course, that's further north. You know it's probably a little cooler up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 101 left here in the football game. Fourth down, four. And Air Force will be close, but I don't think they got past the 10 yard line. No, they've been held. Uh, pretty much the entire front group there, that defense. 
So the Cougars back on offense, and they'll run this uh, clock out. 57 seconds left. That drive really does show how important field position is as Air Force took the ball on the 10-yard line, drove 80 yards to the other 10-yard line. Now, 80 yards is a lot of yards. You should get points out of that. But uh, when you take the ball on the 10, you end up with zero. Brent Smith will quarterback. Cougars have used uh, three today. Detmer, Joe Evans, and Brent Smith here on the last two series. They're going to down it out. Smith will go down on a knee. <laughs> he lost four yards. <laughs> you can see the clock ticking down. Well, the uh, Cougar defense has to feel good with today's performance. The only touchdown they gave up came in the uh, third quarter. Jason Jones made it 37 to 7. Mm -hmm. A two play drive. Yeah. Other than that, uh, they just really have stopped the wishbone all day. And uh, it looks as though uh, I am interested. I'd, I'd like to see Air Force make some adjustments because BYU uses the same kind of defensive tactic every year. And uh, Air Force, uh, I didn't see anything really different about their attack with the option. And the Cougars and Falcons shake hands. Lavelle Edwards uh, making his way across the field to uh, shake hands with Fisher to Berry. The Falcons will drop to four and five overall and two and four in the conference. BYU, they up their record to seven and one and five and zero oh in whack play. The final from Falcon Stadium, BYU 54. Air Bowler Jack along with Mark Lyons and the Cougars uh, looking mighty tough this afternoon. They uh, up their record to seven and one. Uh, a big win today over Air Force. A really good football game played by BYU as they dominated on both sides of the ball. I think Air Force is a pretty good football team. Uh, they're at the end of their season here, but BYU just took charge and control and uh, stayed with it the whole time. You know, Detmer, of course, uh, another uh, incredible day passing in this type of weather, over 400 yards passing, three touchdowns. Andy Boyce, Chris Smith did a nice job. Defensively, though, you cannot uh, under, uh, under guess or under underestimate this team's performance today. Seven points they gave up. Just that one touchdown series. It was a two-play series, in fact, uh, yeah. when Perez ran it down and then uh, Jason uh, got in to score. To a team that scored 52, I believe it was, against Utah last week. Right. And so they can put points on the board and uh, outstanding defensive scheme and carried out extremely well. Scott Giles, our uh, Geneva Steel man of the game, and he's with us down on the sideline. And, uh, Scott, thanks for staying out of the locker room. Uh, you're a little chilly or are it's you still warm up? It's getting a little cold out here. <laughs> after, after you get through playing, I mean, when I was playing, it was all right, but right now it's starting to get a little chilly. How about your performance today, team-wise? Uh, you know, the defense has been a little bit maligned uh, as the season began, but the last two games, you, you knocked off New Mexico, held them to nine points, and today just one touchdown for Air Force. Yeah, we came out with a good game plan. I think with, with the option, you just have to have confidence in your other, you know, your other uh, team uh, members, and, and you do your assignment and, uh, and make the plays. And I think yeah. we shut down the option pretty well. Most of the day today, you had quarterback. Is that right? You kind of enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, the quarterback. And Coach Smith was calling my number, which was a little fire call. I just shoot between the, the tight end and the, uh, the tackle gap. And I was able to get a couple sacks and uh, force right. the ball a little bit. And uh, every once in a while, you enjoy making a hit on a quarterback. No, that's, that's, that's what we live for. <laughs> that's, that's what we dream about. Scott, how tough uh, with the injury to Jared Levitt? Uh, I know Lavelle Edwards told me he came to you and said, hey, I'm going to have to pull you off your red shirt. Uh, how did you feel about that? Was it tough for you? Were you mentally prepared? At first, you know, I was a little shocked, but it just took me a couple while, a little while to say, hey, I'm not rich here. I'm going to be playing. And uh, and I was doing, you know, prep work against our offense and getting some good time, so I was physically ready. So I just had to get that mental edge and prepare for each game. But, you know, it's all worked out, and I'm happy that, uh, you know, I'm able to play. Uh, I want to know one more thing. You had one opportunity out there at an interception. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what happened. <laughs> When's the last time you carried the football? <laughs> it's been a long time. I should be able to catch the hands. Pretty, pretty large hands. I should be able to catch those things. I don't know. It just happens so fast sometimes. Yeah, it happened in a hurry. All right, Scott Giles, uh, get warm. And All right, uh, congratulations. That's I'm, I'm running the locker room. All right, Scott All right, Giles, our Thanks Geneva job. Steel man of the game. And uh, overall, you, as you mentioned in the booth, uh, Mark Lyons, a good performance on both sides of the football today. And they need that confidence if you're a Cougar fan as you head to uh, Wyoming next week. Absolutely. And they uh, overcame the weather conditions and uh, and just had a nice outing. I'll, they'll be excited to go back home. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back for one final thought. Don't go away. Cougars win big 54-7. We'll be right back. Hey, Colorado Springs, BYU uh, knocking off the Falcons 54-7 today in a game. Mark Lyons, a lot of people keeping their eye on up in Fort Collins. Uh, we've just understood that Wyoming has recovered a fumble late fourth quarter on the 37-yard line. Two minutes to play. 
Colorado State 11, Cowboys 8, and Wyoming trying to stay unbeaten in, yeah. uh, in play this year. And see, that's an interesting strategy. Now, do they go for the field goal and tie? tie. Or, uh, you know, are they going to try and win the... Of course, they're going to try and win the football game, but uh, it'll be an interesting strategy to see how they handle that final part of the game. Wyoming been uncanny this year in pulling out those close games. All right, the Cougars up their record is 7-1. and one. They are unbeaten in uh, Western Athletic Conference play, and they uh, win big here this afternoon, 54-7. to seven. Next week, Air Force uh, takes on Army. And the Cougars travel up to Laramie to take on the Cowboys of Wyoming. The final once again, BYU 54 and the Air Force Academy 7. For Mark Lyons, Doug Miller, I'm Craig Buller-Jack. Good afternoon, everybody.